All right, we are back with the Nintendo Power massively long, stupidly long high list. Oh, God, we're not even halfway there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but we're living on a prayer, Ted. Take and, my uh, hand, and we'll make it, I swear. I don't risk that. Anyway, when we last left off, number 200 with Earthworm Jim 2, and now we are moving on to 199, which is Knight's Journey of Dreams. I think this is pretty much their placeholder for the original Knight's, because they can't <laughs> do the original one. Because <laughs> that's a Saturn slash PSN game. Uh, most people I've I've heard who's played both this and the original say that the original's better. That's what Russ told me. My buddy Russ, who got me in the nights in the first place, says that the Wii version, while a good attempt, doesn't compare it to the original. Yeah, I've played both. Well, the PlayStation Network version, but it's pretty it's, much the same thing. Yeah, it, yeah. It, the first one's just better, yeah. I've 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 looked at some of the uh, story cutscenes and uh, uh no, <laughs> like, I'm not impressed. That's Sonic funny. Team plus story equals no. It, it, the at, the least, voice, at least Riala has a decent voice, but it just bugs me the direction. Yeah, I only care the only there's only one good voice and that's Riala. <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of like the original Saturn voice. <laughs> there is no night. <laughs> Academy Award winning performer Riala in <laughs> Night's Journey of Dreams. Journey harder. <laughs> journey with a vengeance? <laughs> no, that's the that's the third one. We haven't gotten there yet. Live journey nah. live live <laughs> free or journey hard. <laughs> For a good day to journey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, well I, personally I have no experience with it, but one ninety eight is Illusion of Gaia. Never played. Isn't think, this supposed to be in the same series as Secret of Mana or something? Uh, I believe so. If not, uh, who who published this? I think it was Square. No, Nintendo. It says a Nintendo published it. Oh. Wait, really? Did yeah, Square it says. De- did Square develop it? No, I think you would have said so if it, they did. Hold on, I need to do my own research because. Let me see what. Well, why you're doing? of uh, Gaia? Because I'm sure that Square had something to do with this game. The gameplay in pseudo historical setting made illusion. Oh, it was it was Enix. Oh, oh, Enix before Enix. the merger. For the merger, yeah. Okay, okay, that makes sense. All right, hold on a second. The gameplay in pseudo historical setting made Illusion of Gaia a superb action RPG, but its offbeat writing is what it rendered it unforgettable. A large, yummy roast leg of yak or poison marsupial pie, anyone? Ted Woolsey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. He did do a lot of the uh, translations for these games. In was the... the translator guy <laughs> for Nintendo. <laughs> uh, I have no experience with this one, though. Hmm. All right, I guess we'll move on to number 197, Wario Land 3 for the Game Boy Color. Yes! This the just best... came out on Virtual Console, actually. Get it? Is it the best one? No, I well, debatable. This one four are usually considered the best two. Oh, okay. What makes this so enjoyable, if you don't mind explaining? It's, it's a it's a puzzle platform, but it has really insane weird things of logic, so it's hilarious. Like there's a like there's a block that can only be destroyed by burning it. Well, why do you get the fire to them? Well, you set yourself on fire and run around really fast <laughs> until you get to the block. <laughs> if I remember correctly, you can't die in this. No, game, you can't. Right? You can't die in this game. No. Really? Mm, so yeah. what's, what's the threat? Losing your money. Basically, you're going for high scores. Uh, oh, so oh, it's Kirby's it's Kirby's Epic Yarn before Kirby's Epic Yarn. Well, at least there's a challenge in platforming. True. Yeah, I definitely like it. Okay. Ryan recommends the Ryan Seal of Approval. <laughs> Was that just a picture of you with a thumbs up? Sure, why not? <laughs> Demon no, art and just his hair. Just... <laughs> Demon art, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's hair what is Ryan's hair giving a thumbs up like the hair forms a thumbs no, up it, it's just his hair <laughs> at least anyway. I have hair <laughs> That's that was a low blow jo- Ryan low I blow. don't care it's called age you'll get there <laughs> you're only like 20 something so older than you two numb nuts I'm closer to you than I am to Ted <laughs> Yeah, but I'm still old there, so that's what matters. 196, Pokemon, Ruby, and Sapphire. Gen 3. Oh, I got, there's my shiny Chikorita. Wait, really? <laughs> yep. 
Wait, really? Yeah. Wait, are Why? you guys while we're doing this? Yeah, well, I don't have to pay much attention to it. So oh, wait, I'm... you've already found a shiny Chikorita? Yep. Awesome. Let's see... And no, I'm not going to be freaking out, because Ryan's been grinding eggs for, like, oh, two weeks. <laughs> if he has that much dedication, then good for him. That would have been so appropriate if we got the Pokemon Gen 2, but no, mm-hmm. they're a generation off. Its speed is enhanced, but special attack is lowered. Meh. Eh, nah. well, well, Chikorita is more of a special I, I, I tank. Or, yeah, so it's I, more I, of a tank anyway. Yeah, it's, so it's fine. <laughs> well, it's not like I was going to throw it out or anything. It was just no. You got to try again. No. Yeah, that's not the shiny you're looking for. I'll do it over again. <laughs> no. Okay, anyway, so what is um, Gen three basically? Uh, I need to get back on the recording, <laughs> Emerald. Yes, you do. Yeah, that's the uh, next book game we plan on doing. If uh, the only reason why we did Leaf Green first is because it was a bonus commentary. You know, we technically already did Gen 1 with Yellow, and yeah, that's about it. The next Pokemon game we're doing is Emerald. Well, the thing is is that I started Emerald recording Emerald before Black and White 2 came out, and then I tried to record Emerald again, and uh, it's just like a brick, it's a brick wall. Because, like, <laughs> if I go into there, if I go in, I, the thing about uh, Gen 3, which is very weird for me, is that if I go in there uh, motivated haven't pl- haven't have played Pokemon in a while. I can plow through the game. It's just as soon as I'm reminded of Gen, especially Gens two and five, I I, I sort of lose motivation because I realize that it's been done better before. <laughs> hey Watson, <laughs> it's I... not like the game is bad. The region just sucks. I. Yeah, too much oh, surfing. Way it. too much yeah. surfing. <laughs> I still haven't played any Gen 3 games. Tentacru- Zubats of the Sea. By the way, I finally saw that Hoenn Pokey rap. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad I didn't watch it with you guys during the race. It was ugh. But now I can't. The gang's all here. The gang's all here. P to the O to the K so. to the M O N. But, uh. I, I, did it, I still haven't touched a Gen 3 game to this day. I've not touched Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald. It's. Uh, well, I haven't played it, but I've watched LPs, which is pretty much the same thing for Pokemon. It's, you should get to it eventually, but being honest, I don't think you're missing a whole lot by skipping it. Because it's not like the game's like ever like egregiously terrible. It's just parts of it drag. Uh, uh, I I guess I, uh, I appreciate it more for trying a whole bunch of different. Like the game's very out there. Um, yeah, I think after, in, like, after Gen 4, I can appreciate it for doing a few different things. But it's... Um, I have a very hard time trying to formulate an opinion on Gen 3. I, I, will, I will say that Gen 3, I, I think, has the best battle system out of any Pokemon game. Because it's I think it's the right amount of simplicity, but still um, uh, com- in complexity. Slacking uh, is broken, broken, broken. <laughs> not if you know what you're doing. Shut up. Um, I don't know, Matt would tend to disagree with you on that one. <laughs> not if you know what well, you're okay, doing. Okay, slacking is broken for main game. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I just I just hate his ability. Ugh. Well, Though actually, with with some uh, with in double battles with the right setup, you can get it so that slacking has every single turn. Yeah. Uh, can act every single turn, and then he's broken. Yeah, mimic. <laughs> but uh, if in multiplayer, if you have a ghost type or a fighting type, you should be able to kick slacking's ass. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's I have a hard time for, uh, formulating an opinion on Gen Three, like as a whole game experience, but I still think it's okay. I, at this point, we'll just wait for the commentary. Yeah. To yeah. get a full idea on it. I'll right. finish it soon. I swear. Kind of. It's it's her, <laughs> it's her winter break project. Don't whip me. <laughs> Ted basically is her winter break project. I think he can get it done in that time. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm jumping on Prime as soon as I finish the S6 review. <laughs> But uh, the 195 is Wave Race 64. I have more experience with the GameCube title, actually. I, I hear it's good, though. I hear, yeah. what, is, what is Wave Race? It's jet skiing race game. Is it particularly memorable? or Not particularly. I just I think it was more noted for having really good water graphics and physics at the time. So it actually felt like you were jet skiing rather than... Look at that water. Yeah. Game <laughs> I think it was it, it, people liked it because it felt more like jet skiing than driving a car on water. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, so moving on to number one ninety four, Zelda: Phantom Hourglass. Top down. 
I take it you guys don't particularly like this one. This game bored the hell out of me. <laughs> hey, look, like, after I, every I, time you complete a dungeon, you have to go to this one place again. And uh, again. This, uh, I, was, I was put to sleep. <laughs> you know, it, you, you ever have one of those games where you, you play right before you head to bed just to make yourself tired? I recommend Phantom Hourglass, because it will do a fantastic job of putting you to sleep. But... Yeah, it this this game has bored me. The way it's structured, the, the same repeated visits over and over again, and uh, no thanks. I never tried Spirit Track though. Neither did I. Okay, so moving on to number one ninety three, Mario Kart DS, which I think is actually the best Mario Kart game. Woo DS! I love Mario Kart DS. To those of you who suck at snaking, learn to snake. Bas- yeah. Uh, you even first slipped, off, bro. if you if you're gonna be online, you have to learn how to be good at the game in order to. It's like people who complain about wave dashing. Well, if you don't want to suck, then learn how to wave dash. Uh, same thing with snaking. It's not like you need it to beat the AI anyway. Is snaking a glitch? No, no it's not. It's just you have to be good at using um, the drift mechanics. Bas- yeah, using the drift mechanics. I actually think that the drift mechanics are at their best in this game. Yeah. Because if right. you're good, you can boost a whole like three times in one turn. And I can awesome. uh, I can agree that if something is built into the game specifically and it's part of the game's programming, it's part of your maneuvers. Then yeah, it's important for you to master that in order to be really good online. It's, 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 On part, the case, it's part of the game. Yeah, but in, in the case of Smash Brothers, like L canceling and wave dashing all that, I you can argue against that. No, this because, is le- this is a legitimate part of the game that they want. Yeah, it's you a legitimate do. part of the game, and it's not something you have to manipulate shit to do in order to get right. Yeah, but uh, it's it's your fault if you don't know how to use it effectively. E- exactly. Um, but yeah, you you guys say this is the best one. I I, I played a bit of it um, because I, I I visit my father every once in a while, and he had his, his uh, my sister has a DS, and uh, she has a she had Mario Kart DS for a while, and I played it and. I, I pretty much had the same experience as I had in the other Mario Kart game. And I just think the so, controls are that the, they're tightest here. I didn't really notice any difference. I, it, you really, um, if, it's something that if you play a whole lot of it, you will notice the difference between this and especially Double Dash. If there's one thing about Double Dash I hate compared to DS is how the way the drifting mechanic works. I feel like you have so much more control over when you boost in this game as opposed to Wii uh, 7 or Double Dash. So is this Mario Kart six? Mm, five. It's five. Five. Yeah, because the Wii came out in two thousand six. Oh, uh, that's right. That's Mario Kart six. Sorry. <laughs> Don't start randomly using numbers all of a sudden, Nintendo. <laughs> all right. So one ninety two is Advance Wars Dual Strike. Never played. Uh, I've played a little bit of Advance Wars. I don't think it was this one. Basically, it's, it's Fire Emblem. It's, uh, it's Fire Emblem, but with tanks. <laughs> Fire Emblem, but with tanks, yes. Oh, which well, is strange, that, which, which is weird, because I like Fire Emblem, but I've never played Advance Wars. That's immediate well, I, I don't yeah, want to say it's, ex- yes. it's not exactly like Fire Emblem, but the battle system, the, it's, they're very similar, yes. I won't even touch it. RTS, I don't, no. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> no, it's not really, it's not, it's turn-based strategy. Different, completely different. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll move on to number 191, Tech Demo. <laughs> Wii Sports Resort. Tech Demo. <laughs> this was this is the one that demonstrated the motion capture, well, motion plus. The Wii, Wii Motion Plus. Yeah, yeah. I will yeah. say that Wii Sports Resort is a much more fun game than Wii Sports. Um, Wii Sports. Did it it's have only, bowling? Uh, yes, it did have bowling. I don't remember uh, if it did, but if it doesn't have bowling, no. <laughs> well, like like the the Tech it did demo. do a good job at showing off the um. The uh, motion plus thing, because like it, the one to one in this did work really well for like the sword fighting and for the um, uh, the plane thing that they did and all that. Tech demo. It is a tech demo, but it's a it's a fun tech demo. I did play this for a good like two weeks. Nintendo Land is still better. Demo. It's a tech demo of a tech demo, don't you know? Actually, the um, the sword fighting game that you do in this one is exactly the same as the sword one you do in the uh, Zelda sword. game in yeah. Nintendo Land. Yeah. Only, you know, it's more Skywars sword based. Yeah. Nintendo Land well, is better. From what I hear, the 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 um the sword play in Wii Sports Resort is actually more accurate than the sword play in Skyward Sword. Like when it comes to mimicking your hand motions. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. I don't think that's true, but 
Maybe. <laughs> Tech demo when Nintendo uh, Land is better. So, 190 is Super Monkey Ball. I the love game. them balls. This was the... No, I don't want to say first GameCube game I ever played. I'm trying to remember. Beca- no, no, no. The first GameCube game I ever played was Rogue Squadron 2. Rogue Squadron uh, 2 is amazing. Um, then after that, it was Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and then this game. Yeah. Um, uh, this is uh, for my ninth birthday in 2002. I got two games, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and Super Monkey Ball, and I love both of them. Even though I've never really beaten Super Monkey Ball. Monkey Ball Super are... Monkey Ball 1 and 2 are fantastic games for in the GameCube. I'm a sh- I'm, I wish they would make more games of these. No, they've There they are more Monkey make... Ball games, but they're not like these. Well, Super Monkey Ball 3D is a decent game. It's just not nearly as difficult. And I appreciate being able to complete a Super Monkey Ball game, but without it being as hard, I don't feel as fulfilled after I beat them. Which is odd, because normally I rail against hard games, but if you make a game too easy, it's not nearly as... Um, if, in, I don't want to say enjoyable, but I don't feel as satisfied at the end of it. Okay. I love Monkey Ball 1, though. I'll go back and play this all the time. Yeah, yeah. we played the uh, we played the hell out of this back when I, I was first introduced to the GameCube. Like, when the GameCube came out, I was you know I played the GameCube. When yeah, the I love the single-player mode, and the multiplayer mode is fun as hell, too. Yeah, um, I, didn't, you know, I didn't end up owning a GameCube until uh, a little bit later, but... I, I was still able to like, visit my uncle's house, and he had the GameCube. That's how I was introduced to this stuff. And we had Super Monkey Ball. And, yeah, it was a really good time with people around. I never really played single player that much. Single but... player is fun. Uh, I will say that having um, having friends over is a, the better environment. Because, like, even though we'd keep, we'd keep we'd play multiplayer um, uh, with it, my... It has a good system. enough single player mode to where it was enjoyable. Yes, that's a good way to put it. All right, so I guess moving on to number 189, Monster Hunter Try. I've never played a Monster Hunter game. Neither have I. I hear it's huge in Japan. Yeah. I hear it's, like, gigantic in Japan. Uh, is, yeah. But, yeah, that, uh, in Japan that, that's really all I tonight. know. Tonight, whoa. <laughs> big in I Japan. Think, <laughs> it's just, I think it's one of those things that never really caught on over here. No. I think it's mostly, I think it's a pacing thing. Because in Japan, they're uh, they're a lot happier with more slow-paced things. And from what I can hear, you don't actually run into anything cool until like 20 hours in. So, Final Fantasy Fantasy XIII? Apparently, you're supposed to play for like 300, though. Uh, (laughs) Ah. Oh, no. So, uh, it's one of those things that I'll get to eventually. I'm just not incredibly motivated (laughs) to Uh, try it out. I'll never touch it, probably. Motivation, motivation, <laughs> get, motiva- get motivated. motivated. <laughs> Number one eighty-eight is Star Wars Rogue Squadron, the first one. Amazing, but not quite as amazing as two. <laughs> Number two is better. Yes. <laughs> but, but for this was, but for, for like nineteen ninety really... for nineteen ninety-eight, this game looked amazing. I've never yeah, played was... Rogue Squadron. What do you do? You fly around as an X-wing and shoot everything. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes a do you Y-wing. Tie some... fighters. Yeah, sometimes a B wing, sometimes a Y wing. Can you fly the Millennium Falcon? And three, but no one likes to talk about three. Oh, <laughs> why? What's wrong with three? On foot sections that control oh, like Oh, so it's ass. the Star Fox assault of the series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never really, um, I never played the first one, but I, I remember seeing commercials for it all over the place, and I it thought, looked, yeah, it looked this game ama- was amazing. It looked amazing at the time. Yeah. The missions are a bit stilted towards the end, so it kind of falters at the end, but it's still a generally good game. Although, if I could recommend only one Rogue Squadron game, two is the best one by far. You can drive. Yeah. You can drive towards Lucas's 1942 Buick. <laughs> yeah, one that's the, actually one of the hit things you can unlock. Is, uh, is but <laughs> you can drive George Lucas's Buicks, but not the Millennium Falcon. What? <laughs> I think I take the Buick over the Millennium Falcon, Falcon just for the sheer lulls factor. <laughs> what? Although technically the best, although technically the best ship in the game is the Naboo Starfighter, but. Um. Okay. Number one eighty-seven is Super Scribble Nuts. Oh, that's odd. We were talking about this before we started recording. <laughs> oh. Well, what were you guys talking about? Oh, no, you were there. We showed you the picture. Oh, Santa. Santa. It's something that he doesn't have. Naked young boy. <laughs> Santa approves. Oh, Christianity. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't think horrible, I'm getting uh, Scribble Nuts Unlimited for the Wii U. Um, if only because 
You said it's only thirty bucks. Yeah. Uh, it, that's how much it is on Steam, anyway. Oh well, it might be too more expensive actually online. Actually, let me do a quick search. Um, uh, it's a, it's, a, fun, it's a fun game just mods. to be. It's fun just to, for just creativeness. As a game <laughs> in and of itself, did, did, did it's, they say how what's what's the limit? Uh, basically, it's any word in the dictionary that isn't uh, copyrighted, um, uh, copyrighted or inappropriate for children. And they do have a couple of like um, proper things. Like I'm pretty sure you can summon Abraham Lincoln, um, yeah. Cthulhu. Everyone summons Cthulhu. Yeah, uh, basically, um, in order to have the best time with Scribble Knots, you need to um, motivate yourself to try to come up with an original idea each time. Because it's very, even though it's a lot of fun to do whatever you want, when you try to get into the missions, it's very easy to use the same selection of like 10 different things to beat every level. So if you try to force yourself to be creative every single time, it's a whole lot of fun. But it does get repetitive really quickly if you just summon bags, rope, uh, helicopters, jetpack every single time. Your imagination makes the game better. Yes. Yes. Okay. Bams, bombs, lamp oil, (laughs) rope. You want it? It's yours, my friend. (laughs) As long as you have imagination. (laughs) Imagination. (laughs) <laughs> Number 186 is Rock Band 3. Eh. I stopped it too. I stopped that. Oh, fucking Rock Band 1 for Wii was the worst purchase I've ever made as a video game player. <laughs> you want to know why? Because I spent 200 fucking dollars on it, and the instrument quality in Rock Band 1 is awful. Awful, awful, awful. I'll play Guitar Hero over Rock Band. I, I just will. I had uh, I had. Yeah, I like the, Guitar Hero more than Rock Band. Honestly, I, had, I like Guitar. My, look, my favorite Guitar Hero is two. Yes, yeah, it'll always be two for me. Free I like three for what bird. it did, but after that, it just no. But uh, Rock Band, I got into not as much as Guitar Hero, mind you, but I was getting down with the guitar, the bass, the you know the drum set. You know, it was one of the most expensive things I ever got. <laughs> but after about. A few weeks at most, it just started collecting dust. Yeah, the novelty wore out for me really quickly, and so, so, as far as I'm aware, I, I, I junked that thing <laughs> last year. I, I didn't sell it to anybody. I just tossed it out. It was taking up space and collecting dust. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll move on to number 185. Hi, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Diamond and Pearl beats on <laughs> Gen 3 and Gen 1? What? <laughs> well, Ted, look at it this way. The, 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 Gen 4 is here at this spot, but Gen 2 has a chance. No, it shouldn't even be on the fucking list. This is <laughs> oh, an God. awful game. Oh, awful. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait till we get to the commentary of Platinum. <laughs> I really cannot wait until we get to that either. But Emerald Gen Four. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, yeah, we, I think we spent more than enough time. I'm really waiting for the commentary now, <laughs> <laughs> but we can wait. Wait. Oh. One eighty four is Donkey Kong Country Returns. It's odd. I don't even really like this game either. But anything's better than Gen <laughs> Four. So I'll play um, Donkey Kong Country One and Two before it returns. What's very odd is, um, especially um, uh, Game Grumps, I've been watching more of them recently, and I watched them play Donkey Kong Country 1, and then they started uploading Donkey Kong Country Returns, and I realized that the two games play very differently. Like in Donkey The, the Kong- physics are very different. Well, I'm not even talking about, like, controls. In Donkey Kong Country Returns, you're, like, stopping at everything, trying to see, like, blowing every little flower, because there might be a puzzle piece or whatever in there. So you're playing it very methodically, and in Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and what I've seen of 3, it's a very, like, free-flowing, just sort of hop and bop, get to the end. So I find that very interesting, how different the two games, uh, four games play. Yeah. I I still haven't really played the game yet. Yeah. I I, I, mean... it to an extent, I like it more than three, but it really just kind of depends. I've been listening to the soundtrack. Soundtrack's great. Yeah. Well, all the Donkey Kong Country games have good soundtracks. But a lot of these are remixes from Donkey Kong Country 1. I love one soundtrack, so... The the Lava World theme sounds exactly the same as Metroid uh, as the Metroid Prime. Yeah, nor, uh, I don't think it's nor, I th- yeah, Norfair. Um, I think it's the same composer uh, who did the Yeah, Metroid. the same person who made the Prime soundtrack is the same person who made the soundtrack. Um, 
I, I like the way it looks and the way it sounds, and some of the levels are fun. It's just I, whenever I think of this game, I remember just, how frustrating. Just the whole package yeah. just isn't quite there. I fu- the fucking pig. I hate that fucking pig. No, super I don't want to do super guide. Fuck you, pig. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, another moving on to 183. Another game I don't particularly like. Super Paper Mario. Uh, super I really Paper. try. I really tried to like this one I because I too. enjoyed Thousand Year Door so much. I tried but, to like this, but know, I just couldn't. Granted, I I bought this game knowing that it wasn't like Thousand Year Door. I knew it was a platformer RPG. But you know, it was still Paper Mario, and I was like, I had such a great time with a Thousand Year Door. This really, I'm looking very very forward to this. I barely got three hours in. And well, you, you let me guess. You got stuck at uh, chapter two. No, it wasn't a matter of getting stuck. I was bored. No, I meant yeah, like I you stopped around chapter two. Yeah, so I'm just, around there. Because uh, the t- chapters one and two, I will say, are definitely the slowest parts of the game. Once you get to chapter three, not only does the gameplay get a little bit more interesting, I'll agree that it's not the most exciting game to play, but definitely the writing and the uh, locations get a lot more entertaining, because chapter 3 is where the nerd is the nerd level, and I find that yeah. place hilarious. I like, I like to go on online, I like to go on message boards and complain about games I haven't games played. I've never played. <laughs> <laughs> um, Super Paper Mario is an odd game for me, because I think that um, this would have been a much better, um, I think that if they had just stuck to the normal RPG formula, this would have been a much better game. Cause I love the I love the aesthetics. I love the story. The music's pretty good. Not as good as one Paper Mario one or two, but still pretty good. It's just that as a platformer, it's so bare bones that I, I you get bored whenever the story's not happening. And did I you, did. You, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ted, but did you play Sticker Star yet? Um, no. I'm. Uh, my mom said you're not buying this, so I have something to give you to, for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Okay, no, never mind. I seriously thought you said your mom wouldn't let you buy it. I was like, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that soon. But the thing is, is that uh, I, I like Super Paper Mario, but then again, I've played Paper Mario one like 15 times. I've played Paper Mario two like 15 times. I've played this like twice. So, I not n- as nearly as motivated to play it as other games, but I still think it's worth playing at least once all the way through. I do admit it's got serious problems. Though. Yeah, I may have to go back to it and give it another shot, but I didn't complete it either. I got too bored. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe not. It's for me. Uh, I don't know. I really did enjoy Paper Thousand Year Door so much, though. So yeah, I think it's kind of like Majora's Mask, where you really just have to push through the beginning couple of hours. Um, we'll see what happens. Well, I'll I'll record it eventually, one day, not anytime soon, but one day. Okay, so we'll move on to number 182, New Super Mario Brothers Wii. Uh, A a very chaotic time to have with, you know, multiplayer. As as Matt and Mark showed. (laughs) I'm not going to lie, I actually think New Super Mario Brothers Wii has a pretty shit co-op mode. Because, I mean, if if you ever... The levels aren't designed for more than two people. It's supposed to be chaos. Yeah, but the thing is, is that... Chaos is only fun for like a world or two. By the time you reach the the harder levels, you actually start getting motivated to finish the game. And when you're bumping off of each other all over the place, accidentally throwing each other and dying, you get frustrated really quickly. Rayman Origins is a better multiplayer game than I, I actually think that Kirby's Return to Dreamland is the is for co op the best uh, one of all of those, um, uh, all of these things. I'm curious. <laughs> I uh, we'll get to return to Dreamland in March. Um, yes, or whenever we decide to upload oh, it. Oh, or or we'll get to it later on this list. It's coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, we uh, it, it's still a great uh, single player Mario adventure. It was out yet. Yeah, as Ryan was saying, it, it was built single player in mind. Co op, whether or not it was thrown in at the last minute or not, really. To me, if you're playing multiplayer, you know what you're getting yourself into. So there's no room to bitch. <laughs> But uh, Elliot would beg to differ. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, it's 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 a fun time. I, I I enjoyed the Wii playthrough. Yeah, I had my moments moments in quotation marks. <laughs> where, uh, Seriously, <laughs> I just could I I lost my goddamn mind. But uh, you, you you look back at those moments and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, number 181's Rhythm Heaven. Never played. 
Mm. Yeah, the same same opinions for Rhythm Heaven that we saw earlier. Same here. Oh, okay then. Learn all. Okay then. Number one eighty is Dead Space Extraction, which, as far as I can tell, is Dead Space for through PS3 and 360, but the rail shooter version. So play the PS3 360 version. Is that what it is? is I think so. I think that's what it is. Oh, uh, I never. I haven't played a Dead Space game yet. I'm gonna. Mm. I hear very. Um, I hear some people really like it, and some people kind of hate it. Well, it's got three games at this point. You know. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna take a. I, I'm pretty sure it's a rail shooter. Hold on, I'm taking a quick Wikipedia. Um. Uh. Um. Gameplay is a, extraction is a first person rail shooter. Okay. Yes. It's a rail shooter. Meh. Uh, oh. Number so anyway, number 179 is Kirby's Epic Yarn. Bleh. What's, Bleh. Wrong, what's wrong with this game? You there's can't a- fucking die! <laughs> and there, I there's, there's no challenge. I don't... This is. I think this is an example of a game where visual aesthetics and music can't make up for the absolute lack of game in there. I think that you would have to be very, 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 very... Um, I feel like uh, if you're any older than, like, six or seven, this game's just too easy for you to actual for to ha- be really fulfilling, because you can't ever lose. So wait, when you mean you can't die, that means you can't, like, take damage or anything like that? Or? No, you, 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 if you get hit, you lose a couple of gems, you, and you get uh, invincibility frames. You don't ever die. There's no bottomless pits. Well, there, uh, if there are bottomless pits, I think you just respawn. You never die, ever. Like, ever. Is there uh, an incentive for doing a no damage run? Mm-hmm. Uh, you get to keep your gems, metals, but... Little metals, but they don't really do anything, if I remember correctly. Uh, hmm. It's just, most people who I talk... Most people I talk to like this game for its visual a- a- aesthetics. It is, and well, the, it is cute visuals, but... I don't. I don't find the yarn aesthetic as um, just as uh, charming as just a normal Kirby uh, aesthetic. Next thing I you like know, it. have Mass Effect fuzzy felt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Quoting Yahtzee. Oh, okay. It's. Uh, I'd play any. I'd no. I. I probably. Actually, I don't know if I'd play this before Amazing Mirror because I hate both of them. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. There, there are just many better Kirby games out there. I think that if you, I think this is this might be a good game to play with a very young child, because you know them, to get them introduced to the like, video games in general. Because you know they can't die. Uh, there's just a cute little story with like it, it's told in a storybook fashion with a, a nice narrator. With there are actually some funny lines. King Dedede saw all of his waddle dees. Hey, you can't be mean to my waddle dees. Only I can be mean to my waddle dees. There's some cute um, writing and the visual Kirby designs. Felt the nice. grass. It felt like. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that uh, this would is good for a young child, but other than that, I'd pass. All right. Well, one seventy eight is Castlevania Harmony of Dissidents. Is this the non canon one? Uh, no, the non canon. Well, it's complicated. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna say Circle of the Moon was ripped out of the continuity and then put back in when people got pissed off that it was ripped out of the continuity to begin with. Harmony of Dissonance is canon. Not that I think it means anything, because nothing really happens here. You know, you, But you, the you, castle shows up and they knock it down again? Up, Belmont's here, whips Dracula's ass. The Dracula's not even really in this game. It's a, it's a wraith that takes yeah. the form of Dracula. I think that's what it was. But, uh... Like, visually, it's... Remarkable, like for the Game Boy Advance, yes. For the Game Boy Advance, that like the, I remember when we we're talking about because right, one of the problems that Circle of the Moon had was that the graphics are too fucking dark, you know. And that was and that was before the the SP was launched, so you had to get you had to play the game in broad daylight under under like the hot intensity of the sun in order to see where you're going in that game, you know. But so it took to fix that Harmony of Dissonance had much brighter graphics that when played under the SP makes it a bit washed out. Especially with Juice, that's his name. Uh, Juice Belmont, like he—he is the—he is the palest. He is the, wait, like, he is like the palest juice, human being of juice. Like orange juice. It's it. The name is spelled J O O S T. Orange Juice Belmont. Okay. No, 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 not J O. No, no, it's J U S T E. I'm still gonna call him Orange Juice. 
Okay, it's pronounced juiced. If you want to call it juiced, OJ Belmont. <laughs> OJ Belmont. <laughs> you know, these so, gloves are too small. <laughs> The Harmony of Dissonance was the first game to really show the graphical power of the Game Boy Advance. Problem is, they spent so much time on the technical aspects of it that they forgot the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Harmony of Dissonance is probably the easiest Castlevania game ever. Um, ever? Ever, yeah. It, not, not just in terms of the. Uh, I'm not just talking about like old school compared to new school Metroidvanias. It's easy. It's really easy. Um. Other than that, though, like visually, it's very nice. Love the soundtrack for the most part. No, actually, I'm gonna re- 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 retract that. I only remember two themes: uh, the juice, juice's theme, which I love, and the Vampire Killer remix. <laughs> Don't they is remix it, other dis- songs? Is it disco feverish? Uh, no, it's actually no. I don't. I'm trying to think. It is not by my hand I have been brought back to dance the night away. <laughs> uh, but it, it's out, out of all the Metroidvanias, though, it's my least favorite one, only because too easy. It, it's, it, it's, it's too easy, and it, it, it gives me a little no reason to go back and play it. You can collect furniture to decorate your room. <laughs> oh, that's odd. Kirby's Epic Yarn is too easy and has a room with, that you can collect furniture for. Oh, maybe from the same developers. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, I'll play Circle of the Moon and definitely Aria Sorrow before I play Harmony of Dissonance. Poor Juiced. <laughs> Juice. All right, so number 177 is Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. Very bare-bones Zelda game. There's your 2D Zelda game on a console, John. It's so bare-bones, um, though. This one. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that Brawl got me to really like the Village of the Blue Maiden theme from this game. Do 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 do. <sighs> it's an okay multiplayer Zelda, I guess, but it's so basic. Would you consider it the Mario Brothers Wii of Zelda? <laughs> In kind of. Do you need, do you need four Game Boy Advances for this one, or can you just plug in four Game Boy controllers? No, you need Game Boy Advances. Oh, you can play they, it on they, your they, own. Though. They released. You can play it on your own. Yes, and they they I think they re- released it later for like. No, they have it on 3ds. Yeah, they I have it on know, 3ds. So because I've it downloaded wirelessly. it but never played it. <laughs> yeah, so you can you can do it wireless. You can do it wirelessly now. Oh, okay. Well, at least you got that. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad game. It's just even for Zelda's, it's very basic. I see. Well, uh, number 176 is Dragon Quest IX, Sentinels of the Starry Skies. I haven't played this one. I have yet to touch a single Dragon Quest game. Neither have Play I. Play 4 or 5 or 8 first. Please. Don't. Please. Please. You don't want me to touch Dragon Warrior 1? No! It's all <laughs> grinding! You will Slime be appeared. <laughs> a slime appeared. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Trust me, do, do, don't bother with 1, 2, and 3 until you have played one of the better ones. I don't, know, Ted, uh, I don't think anything can ever get as tedious as getting the pigtail. <laughs> it's all grinding. I got, the, all... I got the paladin shield unlock in 6. Yeah, uh, but did you like patient, doing those? Patient man. <laughs> did you like doing that? You're talking to the guy who's currently grinding for important. shinies. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Uh, well, though I'm sure that there'll be other Dragon Quest games later down on the list we can talk about later. I am. Um, I just I've been meaning to play this this one and haven't gotten to it yet. All right, so I guess we'll move on to number 175 videos for the DS. I actually have this game. What? It's a puzzle game, right? Yeah. It's kind of like Puzzle Attack, except it's uh, it's not quite that simple though. You have to get longer chains to shoot more stuff. So it's actually to your benefit to let the screen fill up. More so you can get a chain at the bottom and shoot more into the sky. It's a uh-huh. fast-paced puzzle game, I'll give it that. This is one that I heard a lot about in uh, Nintendo Power, actually. Yeah, Nintendo Power, I remember at the time, really liked the game. Yeah, Nintendo Power, I remember for years, went on about Meteos, like, just casually mentioning it everywhere. Wasn't a, wasn't the colors in Meteos also the inspiration for the... Um, the... The polygon characters in Brawl? I think so. What are they called in Brawl? Alloys. Uh, 
Oh, the the alloy, the fighting alloy team. You're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, yeah, the color schemes of the allies I heard were inspired by Meteos. That's an obscure reference. It's Nintendo. Yeah. So, one seventy four is Mario Kart Wii. Hi, <laughs> Rubber Band AI. Why? <laughs> this right. is the worst. E- easily, one. easily has the most frustrating AI in the series. <laughs> w- 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 all right. So, uh, f- uh, before we go to you guys. In terms of what you think about it, let's talk about me for a second, because uh, I-, I had a fun playing the game with people. I used the little Wii wheel thing that came with the game. I never used the fucking wheel. Game eh, controller. All it was the no way. double dash to me, so I stopped. Ted, you want to go? Or um, I have three main problems with this game. Bikes uh, are first, broken. <laughs> yeah, first off, why? Uh, there's no reason to ever choose carts. They they gave the bikes that boost thing. And they didn't give carts anything for you to even have a chance for using bike, uh, for a chance to use those. So, yeah, it might as well just be called Mario Motocross. <laughs> Second off, I think that 12 people is way too much because that just means more items flying around, which partially leads to my next point. Fucking AI. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. This is Mario Party levels of bullshit. <laughs> What's what 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 what's the what does the what does the AI do? We're we talking yellow color. Blue shell to red shell to banana peel to another fucking bolt. blue shell. Oh, guess what? Right at the end of the race, you're now ninth. <laughs> Fuck you, Mario Kart. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but it doesn't ever get as bad as yellow car. Yes. Yes. It gets really? to, it gets to uh, yellow yes. car levels. Wow. You were talking about motorcycles. Can motorcycles drift? Uh, they can drift. They can they drift, can... but they also have that boost, that wheelie boost. Basically, whenever you're on a straightaway, you should be wheeling because you go faster. Carts don't have any advantage over bikes. Well, they so have weight, they're... but you're not. You're never really running into people in the Mario Kart. So, what's the point? It's just ugh. there's no reason to ever choose carts. Yes. This is why I think they scrapped the idea after this game. One seventy three is Mario, Mario Golf, Golf for, for the N sixty four. Probably the only game in the history of the universe where my uncle has played more than me. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> uncle was a big player of Mario Kart back in the day, and he would curse so much at Sonny, who would make a putt from forty yards away. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that cheating AI? Or? Yes, Sonny is a cheating <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> is there a parking lot the ball could fall under? <laughs> no. This oh. is not Lee Carvello's putting challenge. <laughs> Come on. I want a Lee Carvello's putting challenge game. Someone <laughs> make it for me. Even if it's just a little iPhone game, I don't care. <laughs> I'll buy it. <laughs> I no, I, I to this day I, I mentioned earlier I have never I've never touched a Mario golf game ever. This is the most basic golf game Mario has ever gotten. I uh, think that Toadstool tor- Tour has got a little bit more, more interest to it. Yeah. Because you have your traditional, regular old golf courses, and you have some more Mario-themed ones, which things get a bit more hectic. Yeah. Like, I think there's one where you need to aim a ball into, like, a warp pipe so it'll bounce out to the uh, green. Yeah. Number 172 is Epic Mickey. First off, I just want to say I hate that name. (laughs) Yeah. Epic! The, The full name of the game is Disney Epic Mickey. Yes. Um... No. <laughs> uh, what makes it epic? Um, Would have been epic if they used uh, the actual concept art. Yeah, the concept art looked really cool. But no, it's Disney. It has to be kids. So we're not going to take any risks. Well, it's fucking Mickey Mouse. Anybody will buy it anyway. Nothing's ever going to damage the fucking corporate... <laughs> Mickey Mouse that's brand. The prob- that's the problem with it, though. They took no. The concept art showed so many cool things, and they t- ended up taking no risks with it. I really think that Mickey Mouse is just one of those figures that will never die, so they can afford taking risks with the property. <laughs> you just got me. You just got me imagining. It's like you know, the Joker hanging upside down is talking to Mickey. You truly are incorruptible, aren't you? <laughs> but, uh, well, it, it's just weird because the last time they ever took a chance with Mickey Mouse was Runaway Brain in '95. That was the last Mickey Mouse short that they ever made, wasn't it? True. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I really did enjoy it though. Yeah, but it's just one of those. This could have been so much better than it was. 
I just want them to remind me why Mickey Mouse became popular in the first place. Uh, I think that's just want, I, what I want to know. Yeah. I can probably give you a history lecture over why Mickey Mouse is so significant, but... Uh, yeah, I can understand why he was popular in the 30s. Well, you're an animation me. major, John, well, so. well, I'm an animation but, uh, buff, so, but well, it's just one of those, these days, he really serves no purpose. <laughs> no, he really just serves as a symbol. Yeah. So that one, Even, that's, I think, yeah, what go I back wanted and look from this is a game where they sort of make Mickey Mouse, like, interesting and shit. That would have been nice. I mean, like, even go back and watch the old shorts from the 40s, and even they're not all that funny. It was considered amazing for the time, though. It had good animation, it, but that was about it. In, in terms of child-friendliness. Yeah. You know, because Looney Tunes back then was more catered to the adults. Yes. It seems you know? pretty child friendly nowadays, though. Well, like they don't then, swear or anything. Then Looney Tunes was considered edgy. Pretty edgy, yeah. Well, I mean, they, 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 they really? made like they yeah. made like well, you, they, gotta they remember, you gotta remember. Looney Tunes was very there. There was there they was a lot of social lot. and political satire in Looney Tunes back in the, those days. And nowadays, they were we making fun of it. Groucho Marx jokes and yeah. Looney Tunes back then was considered edgy shit. You know, nowadays it's so tame, but still pretty funny. Yeah. But uh, Mickey Mouse goes for the general audience, as in kids, and you know, you, you got a bigger audience there as a result. And yeah, that and Disney you, just had you guys were mentioning that but... Mickey Mouse takes no risks. Mickey Mouse doesn't need to take risks, really. Well, I think he does now because no one gives a shit anymore. Nobody of our age, nobody gives a shit about making even, even, kids. Though, even so most kids that. I know don't care. Well, then what is the end to take risks? To what? P- kids like Mickey Mouse because parents buy their kids a little Mickey Mouse stuffed doll. That's it, why they like Mickey Mouse, and because Mickey Mouse is all over the place when they go to Disney World when they're five years old. They don't effective. like Mickey Mouse because he's in like a cartoon that they liked. It's effective though. Mickey it is a. F- Mickey Mouse at this point isn't just a cartoon anymore. He's not a cartoon anymore. He's just a corporate mascot. Yeah, which is why I want them to make something with substance. I guess. Yeah, I know. I guess that's why I was so disappointed with this game. Okay. Anyway, number one seventy one is Fire Emblem: Path of Radiance. I fight for my friends. (laughs) Oh, this is the one. This is the one with Ike. Yes. This is your favorite one, isn't it? Yes. Oh. hmm. Ike is so powerful. (laughs) I'm gonna get. I I need a. Get cracking on Fire Emblem, I guess. I, also I plan the on picking floor. up uh, what whatever the 3DS one's called. Yeah, I plan on picking that up because February has nothing else to yeah. play. So if I like that enough, I think I'll try uh, some yeah. other Fire Emblem games. Ike is also the first character to, to achieve Lord's ass and not be of noble birth, which makes him interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting game. It has a good story. The gameplay is overall solid. It doesn't hold your hand like the uh, Game Boy Advance game. Well, well, the Game Boy Advance game was also the first uh, Fire Emblem um, game to be released outside, outside of Japan. Japan. So I think yeah. they kind of felt like they needed to do yeah, that. I, I understand that, but it felt a bit too handholdy at times. Well, the first like ten chapters of the game is nothing but tutorial. Yeah, this one is just kind of here's the basic idea. Go get them. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I really recommend Path of Radiance. It's a really good game. Okay. Number 170 is The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, which I hear is a better game, but... I'm on a train. I'm on a train, <laughs> I like trains. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan and I were talking the other day, and Ryan said Skyward Sword was the most uh, quickly forgotten Zelda game, and I said even more than Spirit Tracks, and he just kind of went, um... <laughs> <laughs> A debate for the century. Everyone forgets Spirit Tracks. Uh, yeah, Spirit Tracks kind of fell off my radar as soon as it was introduced. Actually, um, it's like I remember seeing the trailer. What trains? What? And then I just kind of forgot about it. I do remember one of the things I, I saw was uh, what uh, because one of the gimmicks is that Zelda is robbed is of a her ghost. body. It's yeah. a ghost. She was robbed of her body, so she has to pull our Edward Elric. Uh, El, not Elric. Uh, Alphonse Elric. Alfonso Elric. To, and and possess like possess suits of armor, and armor stuff. with his, her spirit. And she finds out that the bad guy wants to use Zelda's body as a vessel to take over the world, pretty much. All that spiel. And she, her oh, so Paper out. Mario. Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door. In a way. 
in a way, yeah. Actually, when you say that, it's really like that, actually. <laughs> um, but, but the way she freaks out, I thought was pretty funny. It's pretty funny writing for a Zelda game, actually. You know, because, it, again, there's one thing I love about the Wind Waker visual style. They're very expressive. They're very expressive, yes. In the, and, it's, and to be honest, Tetra slash Zelda is probably the most expressive and personable Zelda in the series. Yes. And I, and I, and I got a kick out of that. But that wasn't enough to make me want to buy the game. No. You know, I, I'm really not that much of a Zelda guide, to be perfectly honest. Unless it's Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. And we'll get to those games eventually. Yeah, eventually. They're eventually. probably on. They, oh, they are on the list. Who am I kidding? <laughs> but, um, yeah, but uh, anyway, 169 is. Oh, oh, this is the guy I was thinking of Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. Never played it. You're on Never here. played this one either. I hear these are really good. Um, again, that's. I don't, they are, yeah, they are, they are rhythm based games. I'm going to assume the name is Rhythm Thief. Uh, I would assume so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you never know. <laughs> You would never assume Mobile Life Force 2 was a shooter up based on its cover. Phalanx? It's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Um... Do you even know what Phalanx is, Ted? No. <laughs> Show him the cover. <laughs> get him a link. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just, just a sec. Let me get the Phalanx cover for you, Ted. Just remember, this is a 2D space shooter. <laughs> um, okay. Well, anyway, in the meantime, while you're getting that, I'm looking at the cover of Rhythm Thief. The the art style reminds me of Professor Layton, so... Meh. I, I thought Robots. that too. Uh, well, get, I'm sure he's on the list, too. We'll get to, we'll get to him when we eventually get to him. <laughs> okay, Ted, here's the Phalanx cover. Remember, Phalanx? This, is a 2D, this is a 2D space shooter. Space shooter. Um, 2D space shooter. Hold up. <laughs> what do you shoot from the banjo? <laughs> I was told there'd be an old man playing a banjo here. <laughs> oh man! It's one of anyway. the most notoriously bad box arts ever. I think it's the worst. <laughs> bad box art, Mega no, Man has nothing to do with the game. game. You could put anything in front of the Felix cover. <laughs> It'd make more sense than old man yeah. playing banjo. <laughs> 168 is Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Um, I really like this game. I've watched plenty of LPs. It looks fun. Okay, I think I'm the only one here who's played it, though. Yes. Um, basically, um... Hi, Superstar! <laughs> no, basically it's the controls from Superstar with hey. sort of the level layout from Kirby's Adventure and graphics that are, uh, and 64's graphics, but weified. Better. So, um, it's... Kind of, it's a very safe game because it doesn't really do anything new other than the superpowers, which are sort of gimmicky anyway. But I think it's a whole lot of fun as a multiplayer game because it's not near as nearly as chaotic. So you can still you having fun playing the game as opposed to having fun throwing your friend off a cliff, you know. <laughs> which I think makes it more admirable than Mario Wii because in Mario Wii you're only having fun when you're not progressing. And Mar- I-, I played this game with my two younger brothers, and they both had a ton of fun playing through it with me. I've- I think that this is probably, when it comes to multiplayer, the best new Super Mario Brothers clone out there. I, I-, I really enjoyed this one. It looks fun, okay. and we'll get to it in March. You're going to be tournament man? Tournaments. <laughs> Have we, over- we already agreed who we kept picking up picking DDD, I think it was? Yeah, and yeah. Lewis is the hardest boss in all of existence, Waddle D. <laughs> He's fucking Waddle D. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, 167 is Mario Kart 7. Nah. I some of the tracks. It. Some of the tracks are fun, but the two new things they brought in, the hang gliding and this Wonder Water stuff, don't really add anything. I like it more than Wii and Double Dash, but I dropped it very quickly. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, around the same time as I, yeah, I, I, bought I it dropped too. it really quickly. I actually well. bought it because I thought you guys were going to get into it more, and I was going to race you guys online, but yeah. I, I just kind of stopped caring. <laughs> yeah, after about three weeks, I stopped caring. <laughs> it's like I tried to make that community and shit, and it's just like, ugh. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about it, though, that makes me stop caring, though. Because, I mean, by, by all intents and purposes, it's a perfectly fine crafted game. I just stopped giving a shit so quickly, and I don't know why. Hmm. Eh. Meh. Meh. 
Meh. 166 Golden's on the Lost Age. <laughs> this is the one with Felix, I believe. And this is the sequel to Golden Sun, right? Yeah, so it's Felix. So you don't play as who's its face? Isaac. Isaac. Isaac's, Isaac's there. He's I never played there. a Golden Sun game. Most, Golden Sun one is really good. What what kind of RPG is it like? It, it's basically just kind of. It's your typical kind of just overworld. Is it by the numbers? It's pretty by the numbers, but it does what it does very well. I see. I, I get people seeing all the time. I see people all the time talking about Golden Sun and like I just how yeah, but great you, of a game it is. You, you, you oh, the first I mean, one you, anyway. I don't, I don't hear much about the Lost Age or the DS game. Um, yeah, at least play one, dude. If you like, if you like Final Fantasy VI, you'll like this. All right. When you put it that way, I'll give it a look at. How much does it go off on Amazon? It's not that much, I don't think. It's a GBA game, so if you really want to, you could just emulate it. Yeah. No, but if you know, if it's if it's something that I want, to, I really enjoy, then I actually will, will like to own it. Yeah, I guess you're right for emulation. I would test it out. Yeah, give it a shot on the emulator first, see if you like it. Yeah, like if you, I'd say if you play the, I haven't played it, but if you like like the first dungeon and play, play like could... the first five hours and see if you like it. Clownfish, go away. What? My, I have this the app Clownfish for Skype. The one that allows me to change my voice. Oh. <laughs> but it, it, it's the pop-up window. is like really annoying. It won't get out of my way. Hmm. Oh, forget it. I'll do it later. All right. So number 165, Tactics Ogre, the King of Lotus. Never played, but it's made by Atlas. This was, uh, this was like, it's very much like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, I think it was. Uh, I, I think, no, I think Final, Final T- Fantasy Tactics like is like this, because I'm pretty sure Tactics Ogre came first. Well, no, well, Tactics Ogre, the series in general? Yeah, like there were like... like um, there were uh, there's one on uh, SNES if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I was just comparing gameplay styles. Like, how would you describe how you play Tactics Ogre? And I bring up Final Fantasy Tactics because I think that's the one everyone's familiar with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of that type of gameplay style to begin with. You know, like I have the greatest story in the world, but if I don't like what I'm playing, then I, I don't have much appeal to it. Anyway. Number 164 is Faxadu? Xanadu. <laughs> Do not bring Olivia Newton-John into this. We are in. <laughs> if, uh, if, we've, if none of us have played it and we're going to risk having more Olivia Newton-John, we're just skipping to 160. Oh, God damn it, partners in time. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this here? <sighs> I can sucks. only hope that Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story are higher up. I would assume so at this point. It's so I think fucking it's, I think it's boring. Pretty, I think it's pretty well established that this is easily the worst of the three. <laughs> no, I get people ranting. I get people saying that I'm wrong and that this is the best one. Not even no. close. No. Dungeons in this game go on for like two hours. It's ridiculous. Oh, oh I would say it took so much out of me to finish the game. One Good of the writing three is so no, much better. No. I didn't even finish it. You want to know why? Because you, 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 you collect your plot MacGuffins to beat the game, right? And then you got to a point where you, like, lose two of them. And I'm like, God damn it, game. No. <laughs> you don't do that. You don't do that. Uh, I, I just couldn't. I just lost interest so quickly. Ugh. It's odd because I got this game in uh, Phoenix Wright the, at the same time from my uncle for a Christmas gift, and I thought that I'd like this a whole lot more. But um, nope, oh, it's no. weird how things work out. <laughs> yeah, so number one sixty-two for the NES Strider. I've heard of this game, never played it. Genesis- I heard that the Sega CD game uh, version was really Genesis- good. Genesis version is better. Oh, Genesis version. Sorry. Uh, just overall better gameplay, better control from what I heard. Uh, it just more visually appealing. Well, it's a 16-bit as opposed to an 8-bit. Yeah, granted, that, that's a given. But, uh, you know, I think I heard just overall game, it's better on the Genesis than on the NES. Hmm. So moving on to number 161, Super Mario Kart for the Super NES. Why is this above all of the other ones? Which is, It's yeah, weird, because I really don't like Super Mario Kart on the Super NES all that much. I still get a kick out of the Mushroom Kingdom course theme, though. It's okay, don't get me wrong, but I think this, the racing games work better in 3D. Oh, yeah, the the other games are obviously much better. I think this is only here because of its significance. Yeah. It was the first one. Yeah, I still think DS and 
Admittedly, every time I hear the uh, title theme now, I think think of Nostalgia Critic's Leprechaun review. (laughs) He edits in the theme when the the leprechaun's on the card. Yeah. (laughs) Welcome to Leprechaun card. (laughs) Oh, you a mean motherfucker. (laughs) Uh, Well, speaking of... Too bad we can't kill Jennifer Aniston in this game. (laughs) 160 is Luigi's Mansion. Oh. I think this is a fair spot for it. Well, you should watch our Luigi's Mansion commentary coming soon. Yes. <laughs> give, it a, give it a little while, but... That with Eep or... We'll see. I think we should. They're both horror-related. Yeah, but Eep's too short, though. Uh, no, Eep's like a week long. Yeah. We'll have to see. We'll plan it out. But yeah, the commentary is coming through. But I, I do like the game. It's a little too short, but... Dark Moon looks uh, pretty good, Dark though. Dark Moon looks good. I, I know... Uh, I, I, I'm gonna Graphic, assume in graphics-wise, it looks, still looks good for a launch GameCube game. I'm going to assume Dark Moon's not on this list, and I don't know. Because it's not out it's yet. It's not out yet. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. But uh, it, uh, um, the 3DS is technically has better uh, shader effects than the GameCube. Yeah. But am I the only one that thinks it looks worse than the original we just mentioned? Well, oh, mind you, the last time we've seen... watching it on a... Ga- on a computer screen. PC, PC screen as opposed to a DS screen, so everything's a little bit more blown up. I guess so, but it, to me, it looks not, like... Not to mention, by the time it comes out, it'll have a whole other year of development. Um, very true. It, it, yeah, it could be just, you know, it's so still one, very, It's one it's of those, I won't really judge the graphics until we get closer to release, because they haven't really shown anything in yeah, a long time. Yeah, but just time. what I've seen, though, uh, like, because uh, Nintendo Direct also just showed some footage recently. Barely. Um, um, but yeah, but it's still something to work off with. And I, I'm thinking 3D Land is the better looking game. Dark Moon has a better atmosphere, but 3D Land, in terms of graphics, it just looks more smoother. Much smoother. I think that I, I still think it's something that we're gonna have to wait until the game actually gets on the DS before we can really judge it. Yeah, yeah. I remember 3D Land looking really kind of blocky. Yeah, uh, Kid Icarus screen. Uprising looks really blocky uh, in pre-release footage too. Okay. Well, uh, number f- 159, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Uh, <sighs> yeah, this one's another one that I was recommended. To play, and I, I was actually uh, I borrowed the game from a friend of mine for a while, and nah, I wasn't feeling it. I really wasn't. The, 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 the story takes place in a book, or something. You know, it, it's something like that. And at this point, I, I'm sick of of the the, the, the world setting. Evilis, I think it was, or Evilise, least or something like that. Because there were a lot. There was this, this was the time where all the Final Fantasy games just wanted to focus in this one world for one for one reason for another. Tactics was in it. Tactics Advance was in it. Granted, it was a storybook, but it was still in it. Twelve was in it. What's the fucking deal with this world? Can we move on, please? <laughs> You just uh, wanted them to be in the world of balance, didn't you? I just wanted them to be in another world other than fucking Evilist. <laughs> hey, <laughs> is Gilgamesh in the game? I don't know. I'm going to assume not. 158 uh, is Metal Gear. Metal Gear. Metal Gear. I feel asleep. <laughs> Punch those dogs. <laughs> you feel asleep as the truck has started to move. <laughs> I, I still haven't beaten this game yet. It, it's uh, it, it's too archaic. It, yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's, it's a nice attempt at a stealth game back in those days, but oh, was it? <laughs> well, for for 1988, sure, I'll give it a nice try. But if you're gonna begin with a serious start with Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. You can completely ignore Metal Gear One and Two, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Don't they barely have anything to do with the later games? Eh, yeah, well, one sort of does, but big boss well, yeah. probably. Yeah, That's the only connection yeah, between the Solid Series and the old games. Yeah. Even they, they even then they try to like explain retcon- stuff. Yeah. It, 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 use the Solid Series as, as a better explanation because yeah, like in Metal Gear Solid Four, when you see Big Boss at the end of the game, spoiler, it would have. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone's seen it at that point already. Yeah. If not, then. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and, and, and when you see Big Boss at the end of the game, if you've been playing the series since the first Metal Gear, it's gonna have a big impact on you. I was like, "Wow, Big Boss, he's alive!" But uh, sort of, <laughs> you know, when you play the Solid series, 
okay, he's he's back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but you can completely ignore Metal Gear One and Two for all it's worth. You yeah. can start with Solid, and you'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, although I think if you want to get the best story, you have to play three. <laughs> oh yeah, you got to play Metal Gear Solid Three, obviously. But that's still a solid game. Yeah. No pun intended. Ow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, 157 is a game I can't fucking stand. Maniac Mansion. Why? By Jalico. Um, Maniac Mansion is a game where you're locked inside this house full of fucking weirdos. It's a weird family. I don't know exactly what they plan on doing with you. I can only assume they plan on killing you after a certain amount of time. But your your job is to escape the house. It's point. It's like a point and click adventure sort of thing. Ugh, I hate those like games. You, Unless it's Monkey Island. <laughs> Um, it, it's very much like that, and I'm I, I'm just maybe it's because I was only about six or seven years old when I played the game, but it was like something happened. <laughs> Please, uh, I think it, um, I think a medium might also have a point uh, with it because it's kind of hard to play a point and click adventure game on the NES. It's just not the system for this sort of thing, like could- at all. It could be that too, but uh, Maniac Mansion for me was nah. I, I, I'll pass on this. It, it's not for everybody. Maybe that's I'm just part of that group that doesn't get an appeal out of it. But no. So moving on to number one fifty six, your favorite game, Ted. Uh, did I mention that? Uh, did I mention that I got a death threat over this game? Everyone's favorite game, don't you know? Uh, pretentious uh, piece of shit. New age <laughs> retro hippie. Earthbound, Earthbound, Earthbound. Christ. Shut up! We have to bring back Earthbound up again. Run, 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 run. Uh, well, yeah, well, I, I enjoy the final boss of the internet, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately it has nothing to do with Earthbound. But uh, oh, I, I don't get it, because I, I, I'll go over time and time again why I think this game is bad, and people will just, like, Ignore, like I say, okay, the graphics I don't think are appealing. People are like, no, you're wrong. And I'm like, okay, well then why aren't the battle sprites animated? Because that was done in earlier games. Why do the graphics look so re- low res? Because games around that time looked better. And people would be like, no, it's an art style. My problem with Earthbound is that it just... Nothing clicked with me. Because this was actually one of those games I've heard. This game is so goddamn talked about over so over the course of years that even back in two thousand and one during my uh, emulator high, I went and, I went back and I went and found an Earthbound ROM, and I started playing it. But nothing was happening with me. It was like it, nothing was clicking. It wasn't like Chrono Trigger because Chrono Trigger was a game I wasn't introduced to it, it when it Chrono first Trigger came. came out the same year. Uh, around 94. the same, I think I'm pretty sure that Dragon Quest VI, uh, Chrono Trigger, Megami Tensei II, Fantasy Star IV, Earthbound, and Chrono Trigger all came out within like the same 12 month span. It was around the, t- the same time, yeah. I th- I'm actually doing a little more. And Final Fantasy VI too, if I remember correctly. Chrono Trigger was around at least around the same time. But my point is, um, I was introduced to Chrono Trigger because people told me it was a great game. Chrono people Trigger told is me such an amazing play this game. game, and I played Chrono Trigger, and Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger hooked me in. It, uh, it was a great... I thought it was a fantastic game. I love the soundtrack. I love its visual style. I loved everything about Chrono Trigger. Earthbound. Nothing happened. Nothing was happening here. I thought it visually it was uninteresting. Uh, I, I, it, it, it just felt clunky. It, just, it was boring. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, my, my, maybe my tastes are not as sophisticated as some people Pretentious out Pretentious fucking game. But uh, I just... <sighs> No, this this is this is not something I can I, I see. Maybe one day, one day I'll go back and try again. But uh, my hopes are not very high. And this is not even on the same level as Majora's Mask. Like a Majora's Mask, I stopped because like the first two hours uh, dragged a bit, and it was uh, and lack of research on my end. Earthbound, on the other hand, is. I'm given something to look at, and it's my I, it's my job to interpret what I'm looking at, and I'm not seeing. It. It's like a fucking Rorschach test. What do you see? Good game or something you could forget? It's something I could forget. It, it's I, I know. <laughs> and you want to know what'll happen, John? Instead of people accepting your opinion, you'll get death threats, and people will just say, "No, you're wrong." 
Uh, fuck you, Mar- mother fanboys. That's, that's how the, the internet you. seems to work. <laughs> that's oh, way- they, they see, they're the worst ones about it. They're even worse than Sonic fanboys, I noticed. Because at least Sonic fanboys will understand why you don't like the series, considering the, the drop in quality around 2006. <laughs> it's, it's like, if you're not allowed to not like these games. Uh, but, uh, no, I just... Yeah, you know what? It's It's very much like... Maybe you know it, it could be it could be that maybe it's not the game I don't like it's the fan base I don't like it, it's the same reason as I don't touch Naruto you know anything like that it could, well Naruto's it, just not even that good it, it, but there's a thing though it's like ah, I don't I don't want to bring I it on bring it bring it on Naruto I uh, I just I got my freaking wall of Dragon Ball Z DVDs ready here to kick your ass maybe maybe and that's a really big fucking maybe. I'll go back and look at this game. Just don't ever expect a let's play out of it. And never I I wouldn't even really expect the review out of it, people. You have to do something for me if you want me to review this game. I don't because- think they even want you to review it because then people people I think say review uh, Earthbound because they want you to say what they're thinking. And if you say what you're thinking, I don't like this game, they're just going to get pissed at you. But there's the thing though. This is all based off very first impressions though ted it's not a full opinion on the entire game now i'm pretty confident that my opinion now would still apply even if i beat in the game but it's not a full out it's not a full i wouldn't consider uh, my thoughts on the entire game thing is though i'm not going to go out of my way to buy this game and i'm not going to go out of my way i'm not going to review the game through an emulator i refuse to do that that's not how i do it on my channel on my channel i make sure i own the game that i review um but I'm not going to go out of my way to buy this game. I'm not going to. <laughs> you don't have $2,000 to fucking spare. <laughs> no, I do not. I'll buy a car before I buy Earthbound. All right, so now that we've got the internet to hate us, essentially. <laughs> they st- All right, let's um, move on to 155. It's that game Matt was looking for at Too Many Games Expo. Uh, Final Fantasy V Advance. Uh, usually... Um, when it comes to like um, the advanced ports of the Final Fantasy games, the, the classic three on the uh, SNES, I would still recommend that you play the original versions. Force five is the exception. No, well, we five, never got five. But <laughs> five advanced is the best version of the game. You know, uh, you still got all the fun from the SNES version. You have the best translation of the game, period, and you know, have all the added stuff. You have the added job classes. It's a, it's the great, it's the best version of the game. Period. It's the one we're actually going to be LPing when we uh, get to the, get to it on the Let's Play channel. But um, I assume for us, whenever we eventually get to it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Eventually, eventually. Twelve years from now. Now, obviously, because we still have to do four. We have to do seven. We have to do nine. We have to do ten. We have to do. Can no, we we'll do five before ten? We'll yes. do, I was actually going to say we'll do five before we do ten, but I was we'll still do ten. Don't worry, guys. We're getting yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah. If uh, it... yeah. okay. Uh, well, <laughs> Matt I've was... actually played this a little bit. I borrowed the GBA cart from a friend of mine, and I got like three dungeons in, and then just kind of put the game down. Because I'm not really a big fan of RPGs where you have to pick your own job classes. Because uh, you, you I, never I, know how to. You never know what's good in the, these sort of games until you. Me- it, there's a lot of trial and error with those things. So unless if you have a guide. You don't know that the fighter class isn't as good as some other weird class, and you never—I never experiment with these because once I find something that works, I just stick with that. Admittedly, that can be a problem in the beginning of the game. Um, when I first played five, uh, I, I ended up there was actually around two times I found myself in a dead game um, because what? Like you're stuck and you can't win. I'm stuck and I can't move. Yeah. Um, one was in the library before the fight with Biblos, I think his name was, and. The second time was after, in the second world, right before you fight the battle with the four crystals inside the giant tree. I found myself stuck because I just I wasn't effective enough, and I didn't level up the right master. Well, no, it was oh, so you couldn't beat the bosses with the levels you have, but there was no place to level grind, so you were stuck. I think it was that, or that. Uh, yeah, it was just that I was running out of uh, I was running out of tents and cottages. I was I was really bum rushing through five though for my first time playing it. Um, so it was it was kind of my fault in that regard, but at the same time, that, that kind of turned me off a little bit. But uh, when I got Final Fantasy V Advance, um, that was right after um, 
I was going on the advanced port bench because when Final Fantasy IV Advance came out, I immediately jumped on that and I did everything in that game. And then Final Fantasy V Advance came out. I was like, okay, let me get five one more shot. And it, I fell in love with it because I don't know, maybe they did something to the system a bit to maybe tweak it a bit or something like that. But I had a very fun time with Five Advance. You know, I played it from beginning to end, no problems whatsoever. I, all the job classes were fun to level up. It's a great game. It is a really great game. I so, guess I'll have to go back and try it again eventually. Yeah, give it another shot. I, I think you'll like it. I still and, got and, after, and, play, and, play, and play Earthbound while you're at it. No, no. <laughs> you don't want me to play Earthbound, John. Just let's just put it that way. So okay, if you, if, you, if you Final Fantasy you, Advance after I finish clearing out my Steam library, so I still have to play Amnesia: The Darkest Descent, Bioshock, Bioshock Two, Braid, uh, Braid GTA, uh, Left 4 Dead Two, Mass Effect, Mass Effect Two, Psychonauts. Uh, yeah, it goes on. Ted, if you play yeah. Earthbound for the channel, Johnny will do three months of Pokemon. Oh. Uh, th- he's running out of games though, and uh, I don't want to make him play. And I don't want to make him. Play. I'm just gonna say right now, don't waste your fucking time, because no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna make John play Gen Four. I'll stick to the. Well, I don't. We take one bit at a time. Where I just play Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and John will have to review blank game. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Anyway, number one fifty four is Okamiden. I like oh, Okami that's for the, the PS DS sequel game. to Okami. I like the PS2 oh. game. I haven't and played it. Okami, uh, I know that Okami uh, is just sort of like a Zelda clone. In a way. It has the I'd... same basic setup. You have to get your things and you go into a big kind of dungeon area. I don't know. It's just, I haven't, I, I tried to watch Chugga Conroy's playthrough of Okami and I just saw nothing in it. Well, especially don't like since Zelda. he was. He was effectively acting as the fan base for the game, and he's like, look at how pretty this is. Okay, that's nice. How does it play? Look at how pretty this is. Okay, that's nice. How does the game play? Look at how pretty this game is. Stop ignoring me! <laughs> so, uh, so I, have I, have to, I have nothing to say on the DS game. I didn't play it. I have nothing to say, period. Yeah. I, I, the, I, it's one of those things where seeing footage of the game actually made me less interested than uh, before I start, uh, looked at it. Yep. All right, so number one fifty three, Mega Man Zero Two, still fucking hard. <laughs> I haven't played this one. I stopped that through one. Still fucking hard. Have you beaten any of the Zero games? No, no, <laughs> not legitimately anyway. And I uh, and I freaking beaten Mega Man Three. <laughs> I, I I can't. It, I've beaten X five, and I can't <laughs> beat these. <laughs> zero crosses the line. Uh, I, I I can't. I, I refuse. Well, no, I don't. I, I shouldn't say I refuse. I maybe one day, but you know, you know, I run a review channel, and I tend to forget that people probably will want me to review the Zero series later down the line, which will require me to beat the game. <laughs> and well, I don't. You have, to do- you have to do the classic and X series first. Yeah, obviously that those will come first, but. Uh, you know that that's generally how it works for me. I, whenever I'm reviewing a game, I, I I don't cheat or I don't use emulators. I, I legitimately pure skill, baby, <laughs> beat the game from beginning to end. Well, if you want, if you that. want to, there's a Mega Man X, there's a Mega Man Zero collection for the DS. It has all four on there. The, I, I've so if you want to get all four games for fairly cheap, yeah, I, I've heard about that collection. But yeah, it, it just for, for now, I had nothing to say. Yeah. All Number right. 152 is River City Ransom. Barf. Uh, I this thought that this sucks. was a good game, though. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't mean that in a way that's negative. No, that's just what every uh, character says when they die. Well, I, I got that reference. I was wondering about Ryan's Raspberry. I hate this game. Well, Why what do, do you hate it? About it? I think the control sucks. <laughs> I don't have much experience with it. Which is weird, because I love Scott Pilgrim. And they're pretty much the same damn game. Well, that one controls better, doesn't it? Yes. Well, that explains why it's better. <laughs> I, 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 you guys ever seen Mega 64's <laughs> River City yes. Ransom video? Yeah, he just no. runs around beating people up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that video. <laughs> but uh, yeah, every now, every now and then, I'll, uh, I'll reference the video around Mark or Elliot, and they know exactly what I'm talking about. They start real laughing. But in terms of the game itself, uh, I don't really have much experience with it. Nah. Uh, Again, I grew up with Streets of Rage, Final Fight, not this one. Yeah. It's so moving on to number 151, Bionic Commando. Um, not the Nathan Spencer one. The original. Rad Spencer? Rad Spencer. 
I never played the original Bi- Bionic Commando. It's, Me neither. It, it's fun. What mind, do you you, do? I, mind you, I don't have much experience, but... It's a platformer without a jump button. Um, you use the grapple hook to swing around and lift yourself up and do all these things. Can't jump? No. Well, you got a fucking ar- uh, uh, grapple arm. You got grappling a... hook arm. I would make a Mr. Big reference, but you probably don't know who Mr. Big is. <laughs> Okay, I just aged myself about like ten years, so... Uh, <laughs> no, I know who you mean. It's Ted who doesn't. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 150, Sonic Generations <gasps> 3DS. Sonic, Sonic came on a Nintendo Power list. <laughs> no, I think Ted's questioning its placement. Uh, well, I'm just... The one thing that I can tell is that this, is this game being on this list means that there's other Sonic games later on, which means... Okay, good, but why is this here? <sighs> People, I know you're still waiting for the review, <laughs> um, but I really want to get a capture card before doing it. I really tried to, you know, I, I made it such a big fucking deal when I found my kid at Gristan in the deepest crevices of my computer desk, you know, because I was finally able to get some steady camera footage, but I really just want to get a capture card at this point so I can give you guys the best looking review that I can possibly do with 3DS technology. Hopefully the but Space it, Zone boss won't freak out on you. Yeah, oh, he never came down. <laughs> Which is good, because that means Australia is fine for now. But, uh, yeah, okay, if, if I could just yeah, give a quick word about it. It's a okay distraction. It's nowhere near as fun as the console, console game. Because you recall back uh, last year when I said that because we have classic Sonic, modern Sonic 2D sections feel really redundant. That's accentuated here. Because they're both 2D. You know, with classic Sonic, you have Genesis-style gaming. With modern Sonic, you have the Sonic Rush formula. And... Okay, that, that's that's alright, but... I, you know, it's a 3DS. I would have rather have Sonic modern Sonic in a 3D world. Uh, well, actually, that's kind of odd, because I thought that the 3DS would have been a better uh, place for, like, adventure style. Because yeah, I yeah. think that... I think one that, analog, uh, yeah, one analog stick. I think that the 3DS could handle that uh, it sort can. of style. It can. If, it can ha- if it can handle Luigi's Mansion, it can handle Sonic Adventure. <laughs> if it can handle Mario Land 3D, it can handle Sonic Adventure. It's just that, you know, that that's what I was expecting out of the, the 3DS port. But it's not. It's, it's Sonic Rush. And... Is it as good as Sonic Rush? No, I don't. No, actually, let me see. I actually like the. I like. I actually like how Sonic controls in in, in Generations compared to Rush because you have you have everything that Sonic could do in the three D games. Like he can do the power stomp, he can wall jump, all that stuff. I'm glad he has all those. So yeah, in terms of control, I like him here more than I would in Rush because Rush you just had the boost and tricks. That's about it. You can probably do the homing attack with the R trigger, but that's about it. Yeah, but the homing attack is really finicky. Well, and except for Colors DS. In Colors DS, yeah. they finally gave it its own button. Good. Um, but compared to the both games, the 3DS version is fine in itself. Nowhere near as good as the console version. Which is a shame, too, because they have a lot of level themes that I really would like to see get the console treatment, like Mushroom Hill or... Uh, um, fucking... Radical Highway? No. Fuck that. St- I hate Radical Highway in Generations 3. It's so boring. You mean uh, Emerald Coast? Uh, no, Emerald Coast is not much better, really. Maybe you should have just said, I wish they didn't pick as many city levels for Generations and just move on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Number 149. We're only halfway through this video. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> is R Type 3, the third lightning. I know of our type, but I've never played it. Shmup. It's a shmup. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's well, I know fun. that, but... It's fun. I think Radius is a better game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Yeah. I that, still hope that it's here, though, John. I hope so, too. Or at the very least, Darius Twin. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, I, I doubt Darius will make it to the list, but because mm. uh, Gradius 3 is better than that game, too. Um... But we can, we can only hope. If you guys want to... If you're ever curious, play it. I, I, I think you'll like it. If you're into shmups in the begin with. Shmups. Shmups. So moving on to number 148, WarioWare Touch. I think the best this of the, the WarioWare games. Oh, this is the only one I haven't played. This it's is the DS a, one. Yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, this game just reminds me of Nintendo's old um, slogan, Touching is Good. 
I, I, <laughs> I think it's the best one, though. I think the Game Boy Advance one is a bit too simple. Well, you've only got, like, two buttons. Yeah. Or so four. The, and the games were just... A, well, technically the R and L, but no one ever used R and L for that game. <laughs> it's I think it was just a bit too simple. This one gets you a bit more involved in the mini games. Oh wait, I I just remember this and the um do you remember the, the gyroscope add on for the Game Boy Advance? Yes. Oh twisted. The twisted. Yeah. 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 That's the I, I haven't played that one. Twisted yet. sucks. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. okay. Where we're touched I think is the best one. Okay. And okay. Also, what about it, the it Wii also, one? The Wii one's, the one's okay. okay. Smooth moves. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. It's fine. You know, I, I had more enjoyment out of the Game Boy Advance one. The GameCube one, Mega was it? Mega Party Mix. Mega Party Mix was it? Uh, well, it was fun too. It's pretty much just an expanded Game Boy, Boy. Advance. Uh, yeah, for, but I, uh, I think Touched is the best one because I think it has just the right balance of franticness and getting you involved in the mini games while still being very simple and easy to pick up. Yeah. I love plus, the it, plus, plus it. Plus it introduced Ashley. <laughs> He's a fun character. Yeah, I love the WarioWare theme. I love Brawl's remix of it too. Yeah. Actually, if there's one thing that I wish that Wario um, had in Brawl is more remixes of like the platformer themes. But that's kind of off topic. It's moving on to number one forty-seven. Etrian Odyssey three: The Drowned City. Um, I've heard of this game. It's well, just it's kind Atlas. of like a basic dungeon crawler yeah, sort of like RPG. Crawlers. Developed the- by Atlas, so it's probably yeah. hard balls. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it was hard as balls. Fucking Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> I hear for people who like dungeon crawlers, it's a really good game. But my problem is that when I play an RPG, I don't usually really play it for the battle mechanics. Because really, if you're going to play a game strictly for its gameplay, I'd play like a puzzle or platformer. When I'm playing an RPG, you need something more than scrolling through menus to really um, capture me, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know what you mean, yeah. Which is why I don't usually go for just straight up dungeon crawlers like this. But if that's your thing, I've heard it's good. All right, so moving on to number one forty-six, Demon's Crest. First Super Nintendo. I actually played this uh, during the Halloween live stream of Sonic Paradox, off of uh, a request of one of the people watching. And how is it? I-, I thought it was pretty fun. Better than fucking. Ghouls and ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you can be the little annoying red devil yourself. Yeah, but he's so much more versatile than Arthur. You know, he can fly, shoot fireballs, cling on walls. Oh, Does shit. he have the knife? Which uh, owns everything? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't played. I haven't played more than like three levels in. But from what I've played, I like it more than a ghost and ghost and goblins game. So... Isn't it just as hard though? I, At least you I didn't, didn't do more. I didn't die that often, actually, now that I think about it. But, yeah, you can. I, I love it when a character's really versatile with his moveset and the, the red devil. What's his name? Uh, um, oh, fuck, I can't remember. He's, um, in, ult, he's, in, ten, he's in Marvel. Oh, Countdown fuck, I know this. Oh, fuck. It's like Red Arbiter or something like that. No, that's... It's, that, um, shit, I know this. Fuck. Um, to, uh, yes, that, what be that? Let me... Uh, oh, Firebrand. Uh, Firebrand. Fire. What is name? Yeah, he, he he you know he's more versatile than Arthur, and I love him more because of that. It's actually a pretty fun game. I'm I need to play it on um, emulator one of these days. All right, it's so moving because I doubt I can. I doubt that I can afford a, an, a, yeah. a Super Nintendo copy. Yeah, I heard it's really rare. <laughs> All right, so moving on to number one forty-five, Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advance. By that they mean Fire Emblem Seven. <laughs> oh, <laughs> seven. <laughs> yes. Because this is the sequel to Six. Six is the last Japanese-only one, which had Roy from Melee. Yeah, this, this one is, a- is the Game Boy Advance version of Fire. This is the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem Seven, which was the first one brought over here, which stars Lynn, Hector, and Ellie Wood, who is Roy's father. This is um, I I, I actually got this one when it was newer. It's on the Game Boy Advance Ambassador program, which I think he got Johnny. No, no, uh, Secret Stones was on the Secret Ambassador. Stones. Oh, you're right, my bad. I played this one. The thing is is that I liked Lynn an awful lot more than I liked Hector and Ellawood. So I always lost interest after the first ten or so um, levels. What, does Lynn leave? Uh, no, she, well, the thing is is that the tutorial section of the game takes place two, two years or whatever before the main section of the game. And you follow Lynn, and then she she lives in a village, and then she you have to fight your way over to your uncle's yeah, castle. She, find, she finds out she's royalty, and... 
Yeah, so then you... Uh, and after that, the focus um, shifts now to shifts to Elliewood. And Lynn joined your party pretty soon after uh, the switch, but I, I still think she's a more interesting character, so I always lost interest around the point where you control Elliewood. Oh, okay. But it, as far as an intro to the series go, it does a, it does a good job. I wish that Lynn was playable in Smash Brothers. Me too. <laughs> oh, well. They should just make the entire cast of Fire Emblem playable in Smash Brothers. Sigurd? <laughs> With his mighty lance? <laughs> How about they just have a fa- Fire Emblem fighting game? They could. If Final there... Fantasy could do it, why not? There are enough games for it. There's like hundreds of char- playable characters. But is it as popular? Uh, Fire Emblem does pretty well for itself, at least in Japan. It, it, it's double digits in games. <laughs> yeah, very true. But if they made a Fire Emblem Smash Brothers, it would probably be Japan only. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyway, 144 is Tatsunoko versus Capcom Ultimate All-Stars. Gotcha, man. Gotcha, <laughs> the, man. This is very fun. Hold on, the police are after me. The 4chan party van? No, no. <laughs> Why do you, do you turn on your Wii U? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, do you guys didn't hear the sirens in the background? Nope. Oh, no, fun. Lil Wayne, a fire, uh, police siren isn't an instrument. <laughs> a MacBook isn't an instrument either. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do you think of Tatsunoko versus Capcom? It's a, it's, it's fun. It's, it's really it, great. It's, it's fun. It was the first to introduce the simplified control scheme. Which Actually, works. I should, I should rephrase that. Well, An even more simplified control scheme than Marvel versus Capcom Two. And because of that, it was, like, it was really easy to pull off combos and stuff like that. And being good at the game was all whether or not you can, you know, how to work that simple skill set to make really complicated combos. Mm-hmm. Um, Zero is still broken, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why he got nerfed in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> um, but he's, he's like, he's so cool, though. He's Spider Man. He's very cool, Whoosh. but the coolness is just not justify skill. <laughs> yeah, but then everybody just plays as Wesker in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, visually, uh, I love I love its visuals, the cell shaded look. Um, it, yeah, it, it's overall it's a very solid beat. It's a very solid fight. uh, fighter game. Get it while you can, because they just they just discontinued it a few months ago. Did they? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'd be more I'd be more uh, um, motivated to pick it up if I knew more than half of the characters. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went into it, because I don't know who any of these guys are from the Tatsunoko side. Well, you, I think you knew who the Gacha Men were. But... Yeah, but I barely, I never watched Gacha Men back in the day. Um, and so, you may, really, you, I, I think I, just, I, think I knew who Kashern was as well. But... Kashern and Yatterman. I just got I just got it because, you know, it was it was a Capcom crossover game, and I I needed my fill. Because Marvel's Capcom 3 wasn't out yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to get the game, get it while you can. They discontinued it a few months ago. Yeah. Okay, so number so 140. So anyway... 143, Baseball Stars. Oh, not Ken Griffey Jr., Baseball 93. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not a baseball guy. I like baseball. I just don't so, like playing baseball games, because they're boring. Oh, no, 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 yeah. I, I'm talking about from a video game standpoint. I, I'm not I'm not a baseball guy. Boring yeah. games. Yeah, it, it's just... It's like watching a baseball game. <laughs> I like watching baseball because it's a great chance to relax. And a, and a license, but... I only watch baseball when it's postseason. And, yeah, that's about it. Hmm. Okay, okay 142, then. Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn for the Wii. Didn't this we just talk has, about this? This also has Ike in it. But he's not the main character. Would you say it's better or worse than um, uh, Path of Radiance? Path of, Path of Radiance is better. How about compared to the GBA ones? Mm, about the same, about on par. Hmm. Okay, so I'll just shove that into the eventual leave po- file, yeah. <laughs> which is about it's, two it, miles. Again, it's only really point. interesting because I, as far as Fire Emblem itself goes, is that because Ike's still in it, and this is only the second time the main character has appeared in more than one game. Marth, uh, being the other than other Marth, one. yeah. Because Ike was Let's... just that popular. Hmm. We like Ike. We like Ike. Ah, uh, political references. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that was that was Ike, 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 Eisenhower's campaign, campaign slogan. Campaign. We like Ike. Yeah. <laughs> um, one forty-one Animal Crossing. Ugh. 
You just moved over from Poop Town. <laughs> oh, here's a flower. Okay. I, what I assume that anymore? this is just their placement for every um, Animal hate, Crossing game. I hate Animal Crossing. Maybe. I haven't looked at the rest of this list. Animal Crossing is just one of those games that will just suck your life. It's just like, it how did. many hours have I wasted? Dude, this game is ruining your life. I know, but why do I love it so much? <laughs> <laughs> There was a point in time where it's the only thing I played was Animal Crossing, and it got to the point where um, I started doing the uh, I started collecting fish for the museum. And uh, what am I doing? This one particular fish during my time of the night only came out between the hours of one a.m. and three a.m. <laughs> oh, oh, and oh, and you I, can't mess with the clock because that you can't mess steady. with the clock because that fucks things up. You really don't want to mess with the system clock. And so I found myself setting an alarm on the, on a school night. <laughs> Just like, I got to get this fish. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this game's ruining your life. <laughs> it did, man. What? It really did. Do you hey, you know, know, uh, okay, so I got the, the Wii Animal Crossing. And I played, uh, I played that for like a good four months. Uh, I got it as a Christmas gift. I played it for a good four months. And about in April... I needed to send my Wii in for repairs. So I, I get it back two weeks later, and the game guilt trips me like hell for not playing it for two weeks. And Wait, I felt legitimately are... terrible. <laughs> Why don't you write anymore? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, can't... That's a, I, I, well, one of the things I hate doing in the game is weed pulling. Because the, the weeds are like some sort of symbol of saying, oh, you're not playing the game as often as you should be. Look at all these weeds you got to pull out. You can talk to this ghost that appears on a certain time of the night where you can have all the weeds removed for you. But after a while, when my uh, my town became weed central, <laughs> I just stopped caring. And uh, I, I it, it, to immediately not, you know what, you know what's, you know what's bad when they try to guilt trip you when you try to delete the save file off your memory card. Oh, yeah, they're like, all of your friends and memories will never come back. Are you really sure? <laughs> yeah, it's like, fuck you. <laughs> like, I was almost in tears <laughs> when I hit the delete button. Because I, I, it makes you feel so bad for deleting the cut. You know, again, the only reason why I deleted the save file in the first place was because I didn't want to have to feel guilty for revisiting the town after like six months of neglect. But no, they, they pull a guilt trip on you when you're trying to delete the town. <laughs> like, I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> I don't, I just, uh, this game shouldn't be fun, because all you do is run around and listen to people's menial fucking task. I want you to take this to this guy. Run around in circles for 12 hours. It shouldn't be fun, but it is. This <laughs> game is the best. I don't, whoever made these ga this game is a, a fucking genius. I spent so many times, like, c catching fish, planting trees to bud something, for a certain fruit, Fuck trying to game. get the NES games. Fuck this game. To yeah. Fuck. This is the. Ugh, I love this game. Fuck it. <laughs> right, but what? I never, I never attempted. If it, just to close it up, I never really uh, played uh, Wildlife. Was it? Uh, or, for the for, uh, you yeah. only really need one Animal Crossing. They're all pretty, pretty much the same game. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, moving on. Kid uh, Icarus is number what forty. The original or oh, the original? Okay. Original. I'm not, I'm not looking at the book. Here. Okay. The original. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, Uprising better be higher up because I think it's a much better game. Kid Icarus is hard as balls. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Doesn't it run on the same engine as a Metroid One? Yes. Yes. It runs on the same engine. The thing is, though, is like um, Kid Icarus's difficulty is like a very steep mountain. Yeah. <laughs> like, once you get to the once you get to a certain threshold, it becomes really easy uh, near the end because you're so gimped out in power ups at that point. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, then. Uprising is better, though. Yeah, Uprising. Yes. All right, anyway. So 139 one... is Paper Mario. Woo! I guess I we know what's it. higher up on the list. Eh, Maybe. Probably. I don't know. Partners in Time was on this list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's higher than that. Uh, I, I just love this game. This I is like one this of my favorites. I like this game, too. Is... I was indifferent to this one. This I, is... I like it enough. I'm not a fan of it, but I like it enough. This is, well, uh, I guess I'm just the odd one out here, because this is one of my all-time favorites. I mean, it's not like I hate it or anything. I like the game just fine, but... I, I It's weird. I don't know why I like it so much, because really... I remember the commercial more than anything. <laughs> it's... it's it, There's nothing really, like, new or outstanding done with it, 
but I still play this like I've played this at least like fifteen times. I go back. I, I still think Mario RPG year. is better. Uh, I I just love this game. I love its I, music and its art style. The writing's not as good as Thousand Year Door, but it's still pretty entertaining. I got to as far as um. Uh, the fight with the Koopa brothers when they're inside that mech. The, the Ninja Koopas. Yeah, the oh. Ninja Koopas. Oh, you haven't you you haven't really gotten all that far then. Yeah, because I, I was just I was I just I was losing interest really fast. That's what it was. I love the Ninja, was love the Ninja about, Koopas though. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure a Thousand Year Door is somewhere on this list. It better further, fucking be down the road. But uh, so I'll, I'll talk about Thousand Year Door later on. But it, yeah, but there was something about this game that didn't exactly. Uh, grab my attention as well as any other Mario RPG did. Like RPG, like Super Mario RPG had the benefit of mimicking Final Fantasy to get my attention, and Superstar Saga I, I just liked because I loved its battle system and it, its writing. Um, but the original Paper Mario, while I am a fan of the uh, its its art style, I felt was pretty bare. Um, I think that the. Uh uh, uh, when you're v- especially very early on, you don't have a whole lot of versatility because you can um, changing partners takes up a turn, so you're pretty much stuck with um, I- I- early on. You don't have nearly as many options, so you're just kind of jumping on people and using your hammer the entire time. Around the time you get to chapter three or four, the your options wildly expand, and I think that's when the game becomes a whole lot more fun to play. Um, yeah. It's just that later on, there's also a lot of charming areas. Like Chapter 5, you've got a cool Rado, the ex- Explorer Koopa. And the Shy Guy chapter is a ton of fun. And I love like the murder mystery in Chapter 7. This is one of my all-time favorite games. It's just I have a hard time placing why. Which is weird. Because normally I can explain why I like a game so much. And this then is we just... Sh- then we shall wait for the commentary. Yeah. That thing's been on the back burner for so long now. <laughs> I recorded yeah. that over. I recorded that around the time uh, Sonic uh, Four Episode Two came out. So, huh. oh Jesus, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we better get on that then. <laughs> yeah, we better uh, get on that soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So number one thirty eight is Crystalis for the NES. Never played. It's by yeah, SNK it, though. H C Bailey did a playthrough of it. So if you want to check it out, um, I'll plug his stuff any day. It's an RPG, or uh, it's kind of, sorta like it's a top-down game like Zelda, but it's more actiony than Zelda is. There's not a whole lot of, well, I wouldn't say that uh, uh, Zelda One had puzzles, but it, it seems to be like a more refined version of Zelda One, from what I've seen. It looked good enough. All right, so moving on to number one thirty-seven, Pokemon Puzzle League. Oh, so uh, it's I puzzle attack. Uh, I played the GBC version of this, so they're basically the same game. It's, wait, why, um, wait on the screen on the screen here. Why is Richie there? It, it, it's anime characters. Yeah, I know it's anime. Yeah, no, but why is Richie there? In the, Richie's in the place of Ash. Oh, I get. It. They were ahead of the game. <laughs> they didn't like Ash either. Um, but it's weird though because Richie's there in the place of Ash, but his Pikachu is Ash's. Yeah, I know when it's Sparky when he has that little fluff of hair on the front of his head. Yeah. Nerd. Well, that was during the time where I watched the hell out of the anime. That's when the anime was good. Um, hey, the whatever the fuck they call this, the one with the blocks, and you switch the blocks so that they line up. Meh. That's a good puzzle. It's a good puzzle game, no matter what form you play it in. It, I was Even really Street Fighter has a version of this game. I Wait, stopped. really? Yes. Yeah, puzzle fighter. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, hold the phone. We are. I am looking that up right now. You never you seen it puzzle fighter? You've never seen puzzle fighter? fighter? Puzzle fighter. Puzzle fight. With a little Holy ch- shit, it does exist. Yeah. Yeah. That that's as old as time, dude. <laughs> Holy shit, I did not know this this was a thing. <laughs> Holy fuck. Did uh, we know there was a version of that game called Street Fighter? <laughs> oh god. Um <laughs> Okay. Oh, why, are you the, why are you so young? <laughs> I have no idea how old you just made me feel uh, along with Ryan um okay then um 136 is Mario Tennis for the Game Boy Color oh the one where you're the two kids oh yeah this is the one I played the most I actually really really like this game I love it I love the whole stat building I love yeah not Kamina It feels really weird. It was where you guys were getting at earlier, where you, you control either the, this generic boy or girl, and you do stat building, and you you climb up the ranks, and then the final part suddenly it's Mario. Mario. Okay, where did you come from? <laughs> I mean, if, without Mario, it'd be a perfectly fine tennis game. Tennis but... game, yeah. 
But I think that's kind of what they did, was they just put Mario on it so that people would buy it. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that's exactly what it is. I, I think it's like, uh, did they even foreshadow that no. the Mushroom Kingdom is the final challenge or anything like that? Or it no. is really just appear out of fucking nowhere? He just appears out of fucking nowhere. Well, I think you kind of expect Mario to show up at some point. But only because his Colton. face is on the cover of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of messed with the spoilers, I guess. Yeah. But uh, it's not, still a, not uh, quite fun. Donkey Kong at the end of Punch Out, but I th- it's it's just I'm imagining it. It's kind of like just having a a, a a poster of Empire Strikes Back where you see Darth Vader holding a Luke's birth certificate. <laughs> 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 Although when you think about it, Darth Vader's like the nicest dad ever. Finds out he has a son, wants to share his empire, and spend time with him. <laughs> I think there's more to it than that. Yeah, but, uh, I know. I'm just joking, but... <laughs> 135 is Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. This is my favorite of the GBA uh, trilogy. Um, what makes it better than Circle of the Moon or whatever the uh, fuck? Well, first off, you can see where you're going. Uh, first <laughs> off. Uh, uh, secondly, um, like, like before we get into the gameplay, like visually speaking, it's the best one. You know, the character animations are smooth. Enemies are nicely detailed. I love this. All right, if we're going to get into um, uh, the the system itself, I love the soul system in the game. Like we can get three types of souls: like the red souls, which are attack based; blue souls, which are uh, uh, movement based; and yellow souls, which are stat based. And you know the the fact that you can uh, keep collecting these souls to add more diversity because Soma, the, the character, gets pretty versatile as the game goes along. I wouldn't say on the the levels of Alucard. But still pretty close. Better no one, than no, no one, man, no one matches Alucard in terms of no, versatility. No one, no one ever matches Alucard in terms of mobility and vers- versatility. That's, that's, that's a word. Uh, <laughs> do not steal. Do not steal. Yeah, uh, but it, it's still pretty damn fun. They, I love it that they bring it. They bring it back and they refine it for Dawn of Sorrow on the DS. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's my favorite of the. the the Game Boy Advance trilogy because I, I had the most fun playing the game and I, I go back every once in a while to play it. Not all the time, mind you. Like I'll still if, if there's one game I'm going to be revisiting the Castlevania franchise, it's Symphony of the Night. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Aria of Sorrow. If I'm playing a handheld game, I'll go back to that one every once in a while on the Game Boy Advance trilogy. Yeah. So moving on to number one thirty-four. FF one. Yep. Final Fantasy uh, one, I should basically say. Basically, only on here for its historical significance. Yeah. Well, it pretty much made it pretty much made uh, Japanese RPGs popular in the West. Yeah, yeah. kind of. That's Dragon Warrior. Yeah. Well, Dragon Warrior was the one that made uh, console RPGs popular in Japan. I think this is um, Final Fantasy. It's weird because Final Fantasy is like the face of JRPGs in the West. Yet in Japan, people don't really give a shit. So it, it, I find that I just find that weird. Yeah. Well, no, they like Final Fantasy enough over there. But like, it's like it, if they have Dragon a choice, Order. Dragon Quest it sells Dragon like t- t- millions and millions of copies. Yeah, over there. I, I think Final Fantasy is we're more affiliated with an, with the Americas or Europe anyway. No, yeah. I think Europe is a, has a strong uh, relation with Dragon Quest as much as Japan does, doesn't it? No, uh, anywhere, anywhere. I think. Uh, in Dragon Quest thing, uh, one of the games, I don't remember which, sold like 3 million copies, and in the U.S. it sold like 100,000. Ooh. Nobody, li- nobody cares about that over here in Dragon Quest outside of Japan. <laughs> which makes it odd, because I'm a fan. <laughs> but whatever. Oh, okay. Okay, well. well, there's a few coming up soon, so we'll, I'll talk about that then. Uh, right. Look, if you're going to play Final Fantasy... Don't play, play the NES version. Don't, don't play the NES version, because it's buggy. I mean, if you want to play it for the, just for... Just to see, so just for the, just to see how it all began, and because you really want to stupidly challenge yourself <laughs> with broken uh, coding and all that shit. Because yeah, the game was glitched up the ass. A lot of spells don't work, and it, 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 it just mage buggy. only white mage only run. Yeah, I'm not doing four that. white mages. It'll never work. <laughs> one one white mage only. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've played some of the iOS port. Uh, I'd just stick to eight bit theater. If you're gonna if you're gonna play it, play the Origins port on the PlayStation, which re- re- which retains all the original difficulty, along with the, the original combat system. If you want to play a simplified version of it, you play the Dawn of Souls port on the Game Boy Advance or the PSP port, which replaces the MP charge system with the traditional MP bar, which admittedly I think makes the game too easy. To be perfectly honest, um, 
because to me, one of the greatest, one of the one of the challenges of Final Fantasy One was learning how to conserve and use your magic at the right time. In the Game Boy Advance version and PSP, you can spam magic up the ass. I mean, how many times can you cast haste on your warrior <laughs> and have him attack like eight times in one turn to do like two thousand points of damage? It makes all the bosses a joke. I'd say stick to eight bit theater. <laughs> one of the best sprite comics ever. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if you haven't read Eight Bit Theater and you even like Final Fantasy One, do go 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 do that. Seriously, number one thirty three is Jet Force Gemini. I think this was one of the last games Rare made for Nintendo besides Perfect Dark. Uh, this 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 is this is like, I don't even know what this game is. I remember is the ever it came out around the same time Donkey Kong sixty four did. I heard of this game definitely. I've heard of this title before. Yeah, I don't. Know. Uh, I, never, I don't know I what kind of a it, game though. it is though. Hold on, now 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 I've got a see what even genre it is because it's just one of those games that I know about but I only know the title that's all I know hold on it's a third person shooter yeah I remember it got advertised heavily along with Donkey Kong 64 um let's see it was made by the same team who made uh, Blast Core hmm. uh let's see so Jet yeah, Force Gemini rare. received generally positive review okay hold on now I'm gonna check how much it goes for Amazon it's pretty cheap on Amazon yeah. uh let's see um you guys uh, just have Wikipedia and Amazon tabs open. Yeah. Um. Hold on. I, you can get it used for two bucks. For two yeah, bucks. So I say it's pretty cheap on Amazon. Oh, wait. Hold on. A new copy. Hold on. You can get a new copy for fifty bucks, or you can get a collectible copy for thirteen. <laughs> what about mischief makers? Oh God. No. Oh, Amazon and your. Well, hold on. Thirteen for a collectible copy. I might have to think about that actually. <laughs> All right, so I guess well, we moving... play the game. So yeah. next one, 132 is Advance Dance Wars, the original for Game Boy Advance. Fire Emblem, but with tanks. Thanks. Oh, uh, okay. So pretty much anything you guys said for that game applies here. Mm, I've played uh, one of the DS uh, Advance Wars, not this one specifically, but I don't think they're too different. I think the one I played was called Days of Ruin. Maybe I it think was. So. It, it, from what I to- looked at screens, it was a lot darker and edgier than any other Advance Wars title. But the gameplay looked pretty much the same. So moving on to number 131, it's Baton Kaitos, Eternal Wings in the Lost Ocean, also known as the game no one played. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Baton Kaitos like really well received by critics and nobody no played it. No one played it. <laughs> I remember this getting a lot of buzz. Yeah, but no one played it. Then I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I've heard says that it's a good game, but I've never played, never played it. <laughs> What are you doing in this game? It's an RPG. I think it's that an RPG. I, it's an RPG. That's pretty much all I know. Hmm. Uh, maybe one day, but not now. Hmm. So number one thirty is Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Stupid bongos. I th- if you can get past the fact that you're using bongos. Stupid bongos. Because I will say it's a very odd way of uh, controlling. But the, it, once you get used to it, it controls pretty well. Stupid, it's a fun game. Stupid bongos. You're just using bongos to travel ta- from left to yeah, right? Yeah, you, you tap right to go right. You tap left to go to left. You clap yeah. to attack. It, you it, it, once to you get into it, it's very fun. It's just kind of... It's just you have to sort of ignore the fact that you're using bongos. Don't plug in a controller, because using a controller is worse than using bongos. Really? But, because it, 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 when you plug in the controller, the controller mimics the bongo movements. So instead of holding right to go right, you have to tap the controller to the right like you're tapping a bongo to go right. I know it's kind of hard to explain, but... No, I know exactly what you mean, and that's really stupid. Yes. I, I, I get that, but if you have the bongo attachment and you're willing to use, and you're just willing to say, okay, it's a bongo attachment, I'm going to use it and take it seriously. If you're willing to put yourself into that mindset, it is a very fun game. Huh. It's made by the same team who did Galaxy, so it's um it's a very entertaining game to look at, and I think that the soundtrack's one of the more underrated ones on the GameCube. Hmm. Um, but if you can put yourself in the right mindset, it's a fun game. Okay. Stupid bongos. Number one twenty nine is Bit Period Trip Runner <laughs> for the Wii Wear. Never played. Never. Uh, it, indie game that I'll get to one day, but not the, this day. The blocky graphics and simple gameplay of Bit dot. Trip Runner, 
hide the fact that it's one of the most addictive and challenging games in recent years. It's hard to avoid the one more try syndrome as you attempt to perfectly run, jump, slide, and kick your way through each stage. So it's one of those simple but addictive games. I guess. There's like there's like a bunch of different versions or something. I don't know. It's just one of those things that I never was too motivated to try out. All right. Uh, uh, Nintendo Power also has this by the numbers, years, graph. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, pretty much just, just for between the years of 1985 and 2012, the one that generated the most games on the list 2002. was 2003 and 2010. Yeah. Wait, really? 2005 was also pretty high. Huh, yes. odd. Well, 2003 was around the GameCube era, so we had, Louis just mentioned, we had Melee, we had Prime, we had, uh... We'll just uh, have to see. Yeah, well, let's see. Anyway, number 128 on the list Super is Mario, Mario RPG. RPG I'm probably the only, the only one, one here who thinks me. that Paper Mario is better. Am, am, I, am I? Yes, I, I think I am. How dare you have an opinion? <laughs> Fuck you, yeah. Ted. Then I find out I'm still Okay, okay, okay. you know, I don't even think that the Forest Maze song is all that good. Exiting the forest is super simple. I don't, I don't do think that song's all that good. I like the song, but it's not my favorite song in the game. I think that a lot of the other songs in the game... You don't like Rawest Forest? <laughs> uh, no, I think that... Like the, the... What's it called? The Road is Full of Dangers? That, that song I think I like a whole lot better. Uh, it's just... I I don't know. Maybe it's just that I was too used to the other Mario RPGs I played after it. Yeah, but maybe, I don't maybe like you were the, just a bit too young. It it uh, it's too. I funny. like it because it's Final Fantasy with Mario. Who do you I think you like are, Bruce Lee? It's Final Fantasy with Mario. <laughs> who, who do you think you are, Bruce Lee? You can't just go in there putting your arms around. <laughs> I think the writing is part of why I don't like it as much. Because for out, some he re- knows about timed hits. <laughs> I for some reason I think that it's not. I don't want to say it's not written as well, but I don't think because it's the writing's. It's written well for the time in which I should give out. it a pass because it was the first time I did it. Yeah. I, I and Bowser's uh, actually funny. This uh, well, I think this game does uh, start the trend of Bowser being funny because he's hilarious in every single RPG game that he's in. Um. Yeah. Even Paper Mario One. He quotes the Emperor in Paper Mario One. <laughs> Um, ugh, I I need it, I need to go back to it to really formulate my. Thoughts. I would I would say, you know, I, I can't really you can't really compare Mario RPG to the likes of Paper Mario or the Superstar games, um, because they're they're quite different in terms of mechanics. So I, I really I really can't tell you where to begin if you're interested. I think it's just I would a say matter just of try the game. Just try the game one more time and see how you like it. It was just I a mean, matter if you, of... If you like Final Fantasy 4 and 6, you should like this game. I know, but it's weird, because I think it's just a matter of hype. Because before I played uh, this game, like, this game came out on, on the Virtual Console, what, like, 2008-ish? Right. I remember there was a huge wait for it to come on Virtual Console. Mm-hmm. And uh, before that, that was really when I started trolling forums and um, uh, YouTube. And everybody always went on about how great this game is. So I was well, really looking forward to it because it was the start of the Mario RPGs, which I all really like, except for Partners in Time. But besides that, you know, I really love these games. Well, and then just, I, I, just to put a little more in perspective here, I, I, I like our Mario RPG a lot because it, I, I pretty much said that it's Final Fantasy with Mario characters. Thing is, though, uh, titles like 4 and 6 still beat the shit out of this game completely. Because <laughs> as, as, as much as I can play this game, I, I don't revisit it that often. I just I find it an enjoyable game. I'll, I'll play this before I play Paper Mario. One. Yeah, I would. Paper Mario One. Yeah. I would play Thousand Year Door for playing this one. Yeah, I could take or leave either. At the same time, as far as love, how much I like them. Eh, I I I, pro- I need to reformulate my thoughts on this because yeah, then again, give, it was I'd something it I dropped. Sh- yeah, I'd say give I, it another I'd, shot. I'd give um, yeah. This isn't something like Earthbound where I hated it. It's just kind of like I felt very underwhelmed uh, when I played it. Give it another shot. Yeah, I'll try it again. Maybe, um, maybe. <laughs> Number one twenty-seven is the last story. Oh, I've played this. What? Both of you own it, but haven't played it. If I remember, I've first. played about a few hours into it. A few hours. It's, it's it's Final Fantasy thirteen all over again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
I, I, I'm still rather confused by the battle mechanics, to be honest. I'm uh, taking its simplified structure. The battle uh, mechanics basically, um, uh, basically, you want to use the uh, the glowy power. I forget what its name is to draw attention away from um, your mages so they can blow shit up, and you, you just walk into enemies, and that's how you attack them. But they, the, they, they, they do the attacking for you, and I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't like that. I I don't mind it. I I, I will later on. Uh, how far did you get? You only played a few hours, like right? Yeah. As you go through the game, you learn new um, abilities as the story progresses. Like uh, one point, you learn a move that when you run towards a wall, you'll leap on, you'll stick to the wall, and then you, a little crosshair will appear. And then once you uh, press the button, you'll do like a jump kick in the air and land on all of the enemies that you wanted to. Yeah. So as the game goes more and more, it, the game gets more complex. Um, you can also set the, you can also uh, change the control layout so that you press a button to attack. But I kind of like the uh, auto attack better. I yeah. think we know who's going to do the recording for this eventually. I need. I've only played it once, and I need to go back to it again. But uh, you- I enjoyed what I played. Um, I was kind of disappointed by the soundtrack, though, which is odd because Umatsu did it. That's a, all, that's another reason why I got the game. Yeah, it's it's odd because the music is good. Umatsu just saves the best pieces for like the last three hours of the game. <laughs> Damn it, Umatsu! <laughs> because like there's a bunch of really great, unique boss themes in the game. The thing is, is that uh, they're for like the last four bosses, and it's like this random mook gets an awesome or, uh, original <laughs> boss theme, and I'm like, you know, I would have liked this strung out throughout the game, Umatsu. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I I um, I'd say give it another go. It's it's got its kinks, but I still think it's a very good game. <laughs> I like it better than Xenoblade for what it's worth, but I'm sure that's on the list somewhere. And that's moving on to number one twenty eight, Shadowgate. Number one twenty six is Shadowgate. How many, how many ways can you die? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> lot. <laughs> you know what though? Because uh, I actually uh. uh, pl- uh tested this game out a few years ago before we decided to do it for the LP channel and well I died maybe about eight times in the first screen alone <laughs> but uh, I actually ever since we did the LP I actually have grown to love its soundtrack like, I, I love this game's music it's really good stuff for the and enemies. then your torch will run out oh yeah then the torch runs out and suddenly you're oh yeah I'm playing a game and then you're but, screwed uh, <laughs> Oh man, this! I, if it weren't for the let's play that we did with, with the Burly Men, I would have never guessed all, half of the shit that you're supposed to do. Did you have a guide open? For no, that they open? were the guide. No, no, no. Uh, my my, the, my the, friend Davis, the one I played the game, hasn't been playing the, the game since his kid, his childhood. Davis was the guide. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh wait, me. I just called him by his real name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we know two out of three. Davis, Russ, and... Um, <laughs> might as well just spill the beans now, John. All right, fine. I don't know if they listen to Brain Scratch commentary, but uh, Commander Yako is my roommate, Jacob. Opaque Senator is Russ. Walrus King is Davis. And uh, I think that was it. Oh, and there was the mole. But we don't call him by his real name. Only because I don't know his real name. <laughs> Uh, Matt is Matt, and Elliot is Elliot. Matt is Matt, Elliot is Elliot, and John is... Or is is Elliot, Matt, and Matt, Elliot? (laughs) Oh. Da-da-da. Ages. Anyway, number 124... No, number 125 is Dragon Dragon Warrior 4. Okay, so this is a lie. Uh, There's actually a DS on there instead of NES, and it says Dragon Quest 4, the... Whatever the subtitle is, the, play the DS version because the <laughs> NES version has uh, you have to use AI for your uh, partners, and I don't trust NES AI at all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, play the DS version. But uh, this is actually my favorite one of the Dragon Quest games that I've played. Um, the st- structure is kind of like uh, Final Fantasy IV, where you have a rotating party uh, for the first half of the game. Like you start off playing one character, and then you'll play another character. <laughs> And the party members change up until the very end when they all come together. And it actually has a story, which is odd, because most of the Dragon Quest games before that didn't have a plot. It's still, well, it had a very basic plot. This one has something a little bit deeper. The, the battle mechanics are fun. It's just a very fun game. And um, 
I, I like I like it a lot. And if you're gonna play the game, uh, the Dragon Quest games, I'd recommend starting on this one. Or I hear eight's really good too, but I haven't played that one yet. But this You're is right. definitely well, eight's a PS2 only game. So uh, no, I'm surprised though. Kind of looking at the release here, it's ninety two. I'm surprised it wasn't a Super Nintendo game. It was probably in development before the Super Nintendo came out. Hmm. It, it's also um, the Dragon Quest games for NES were also released um, uh, on the Famicom several years before they got over to the United States. So it was probably released a couple of years before that, uh, before the Super Nintendo even came out. Yeah, uh, most likely, right? Because I know uh, that Dragon Warrior One was released like three years after it came out in Japan. So uh, I'd recommend giving it a shot if you're ever uh, curious. The DS version's pretty cheap, I'm pretty sure. All right. So moving on is number one twenty four, Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire. It's pinball with Pokemon. I played the Pokemon, uh, the, played the Game, Game Boy, Boy Color one. Or with the Rumble. Uh, yeah, thing. With the Rumble that required one battery. <laughs> yeah. Weirdest <laughs> Game Boy cartridge I have. Yeah. Why one battery, though? No one ever uses just one battery. <laughs> God. Okay, I need to get two batteries for my. Ro- oh, God, God damn it, there's po- only one left. Pokemon, Pokemon Pinball. pinball. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh, well, let's uh. Oh wait, I'm getting my sentence confused here. I Number think the 20... Game Boy Co- Color Rumble was weird. It didn't. Well, wor- it barely at worked. Least it, made, it barely worked, and I remember uh, it, it made your cartridge immediately identifiable. Hey, playing mm-hmm. Pokemon Pinball, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I remember Kirby and Kirby's Tilt and Tumble were the two oddest looking con- cartridges for that. Which that, that's another game that also barely fuck, fucking worked. Was there ever a Super Noah's Ark 3D for the Game Boy Color? No. The, don't, such don't. Waste, such wasted potential. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so moving on to number Will we one. ever meet Carl the Camel? <laughs> no. <laughs> but he wants to sell us cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> 123 uh, is Mega Man 9. Woo. Um, Meh. Third favorite Mega Man game. Really? I like two and three more, but third favorite. Oh, 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 okay. Too many fucking traps. If you realize why we're kind of sporadic with the comments, we just finished our commentary for this one. Uh, come back in a month. It might be it, up. <laughs> yeah, but around February. Something like that. So, um, number 122, Pycross 3D. Never played. Yeah, me neither. Is that it's that, that thing you, like you? No, I don't. I don't even know what Pycross is. <laughs> it's a, it's some sort of puzzle Picross. thing. Yeah, yeah. So moving on to number one twenty one, No More Heroes two, Desperate Struggle. Yay! Here we go. Okay, yes. Gameplay wise, it's much better than No More Heroes one. Story wise, no. <laughs> Make a story third is, game, please. Storyline is just it, it, it kind of annoys me on a few ends, but it, uh, it, it, the story is good enough. And the story's good enough, yeah, but, it, it, you know, No More Heroes 1 just, I thought it was better. Yeah. So, okay, well, John, here's the thing. Do you think that it's a better game overall because it has better gameplay but a less interesting story? Or do you think that the story for No More Heroes 1 makes it better? Than oh, gameplay-wise, yeah. I think No More Heroes 2 is a better game only because I love the improvements they made with it. You yeah. know, I didn't really like the hub world in No More Heroes 1, and yeah, you know, everything in No More Heroes 2 was just point, click, you're there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the story really... The reason why I enjoyed No More Heroes 1 in the first place, the reason why I was able to deal with the hub world and all that shit, was because I really loved its story and dialogue. And while No More Heroes 2 is also has a lot of its own moments of hilarity... Giant robots! <laughs> it, 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 I think it just... Uh, even if you're supposed to be a parody of some things, you're, you're taking yourself a little too seriously here, my friend. Old Midget Elton John... <laughs> And they just... It, it falls flat on a lot of areas. And Fucking I Sylvia, have, man. I can't stand that bitch. I, I don't can't think play you're the, supposed to stand her, though. I, and I can't play the final boss without reliving Lewis's little speech. Oh, the hamster speech. Yeah. I came out of <laughs> fucking nowhere. Yeah. What the hell instigated that? I don't know. <laughs> That's still one of the most bizarre moments in our channel. <laughs> Well, number 120 is Castlevania. The original. 
Da, yeah. da, 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 da. Na, 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 na. Oh, for a second there, I thought you were saying Guile's name for a second. <laughs> no, that's, oh, no, that's slightly okay. lower on the list. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> hey, have you guys ever played the original Castlevania? I, have. I got about I've never like three it. levels through and then got frustrated. I and got to death off. and gave up. <laughs> <laughs> holy I water. Because I didn't have holy water. I actually had to bite the bullet and fight death legitimately during the Sonic Paradox Halloween run. <laughs> um, <laughs> Did you, you win? So, I, I, I use save states, but I didn't have because I use, I usually use holy water. You need when to I use death. holy water. I, I usually use holy water when I fight in death. I didn't have holy water this time around, so that's I had why, to, that's why I gave up. I didn't yeah, have holy I water. To, I had to repeatedly use save states to memorize his patterns because actually one of the things is that he always he he always moves in a V formation. He goes. He starts in like the right side, then he moves down, down towards to the, the platform left. Simon's standing on, then and he then he moves to the, to the left. left side. Thing is, though, is that you have to remember that he can only summon so many Sifes at once. So keeping so, them on screen is actually a good thing. Keeping them, keeping them most of them on screen. No, no, not most of them, just one. Because if you keep one on the screen, I think it programs so that he won't technically summon any more until all the Sifes are gone. So get rid of the Sifes except for one. You can easily maneuver around that one, and you can get a lot of shots of death. That's what you got to do. How the oddly specific. Way. How oddly specific. <laughs> Just get triple shot holy water and make all your troubles go away. <laughs> so, Ted, another one for you, number 119. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. Okay, so I actually did some scanning later down on the list. Um, my favorite game in the series, uh, Trials and Tribulation, is not on the list at all. Um, but thankfully, the game that I like the least, Apollo Justice, is also not on the list. Everyone, so, everyone hates Apollo Justice. Yeah, um, so I think I'll just stick to talking about... Uh, I would have had uh, Trials and Tribulations on this list, but I guess I'll just talk about Justice for All. Um, uh, oh, just for one second. I'm so unfamiliar with this series. When you say Apollo Justice, I just think of Apollo Creed in the Attorney of Law for some reason. Apollo Justice is the <laughs> fifth game. No, fourth game. Fourth. Um, right. Well, canonically, it's the sixth game. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> um... Basically, uh, Justice for All is the second game in the series. Trials and Tribulations is the third third game. Uh, Apollo Justice is the fourth game, and Investigations 1 and 2 take place in between 3 and 4. Are you confused yet? I'm not even paying attention. Okay. <laughs> but go on. <laughs> um, Justice for All is kind of weird in that I love the last case in the game. I think the last case is one of the best ones in the entire series. Uh, but... Th- Everything before it's just kind of meh, especially the fucking circus case. Eh, um, um, there's another Phoenix Wright game later on, so I'll talk more about why I like the series in general then. But uh, when it comes to the first three games, I think that this one's actually the weakest one. So I'm kind of wondering why they picked this one. It's weird. This is the first one, though, isn't it? No. It's the it's the second one. The second one. Oh, okay. For my money, the third one's the best one. But Phoenix Wright Days Attorney is just the first one. Yeah. Okay. So, there's another one later down, so I'll talk about it more then. Well, 118 is Golden Sun. Woo. This is the one you guys told me that I should at least yes. pick up. But yeah. uh, I haven't tried uh, Golden Sun. Give it, a, give it a try, dude. If you like 4, I don't think I'll see 4 and 6, you'll like this. Okay, I'll take your word for it. But, yeah, that's pretty much all we can say about it. Number 117 is Cave Story. Eh. This was, another this one was a, Ted loves. This was an eh. impulse. This was an impulse buy for me. Um... Because uh, I, I recall reading something where someone's thoughts about it and saying that it's a, it's, a, it's very Metroidvania style, and you know I like Metroidvania. It's so. not really Metroidvania though. It's, it's more just, it's, it's a linear ended. level, and then you just got to backtrack out of it once you're done doing what you're doing in there. So uh, I, I I picked it up and uh, I I got pretty bored of it. Uh, this is just the we- first off. This is like. For some reason, uh, this game was, this is an indie game on the PC for a while, and then it got released on the WiiWare, and people were very excited. It's like, wow, this indie game's finally getting recognition, and then after that, the guy who made Cave Story just sold out and ported it to everything. <laughs> I mean everything. Wasn't uh-huh. it also released in the 3DS? Mm-hmm. Three, it was released on 3DS, both download, uh, DSi, um, on, the, on Steam, even though you can get it for free, you can pay for it on Steam. Um, <laughs> and I think there's an iOS port too, but don't don't uh, quote me on that. Uh, I just found it so boring. It, parts of it really frustrated me too. I think the controls really floaty. 
And if there's one thing I hate, I hate that you can lose experience points by getting hit. Fuck yeah, that I, I, didn't li- I didn't like that either. Uh, Fuck that it. game mechanic up the ass. And also, the little this is a real nitpick, but the little sound of the little gems that you collect as experience points really fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, I'll, I'll, we've all played it, right? Yeah, I've played it. A little bit. Uh, okay, well, we'll probably do it for the channel one day. Uh, I guess we'll, I'll explain more why I just am so ambivalent to it later. Okay. Is that even the right word? I don't think that's the right word. <laughs> Move, moving yeah. on. Number What a horrible is, night for a curse. Yeah. Why is this here? Hi. What? Uh, huh? Very huh? good question. No one huh? likes what? Castlevania 2. Uh, John, I'm pretty sure that every Castlevania game on this list so far is better than this, right? Uh... Why is this on the list? <laughs> <laughs> they just like bloody tears that much. You, you know what? Yeah, you get sick that, of it after well, four hours, though. So. Uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me Castlevania 3, or at the very least Super, Super Castlevania, Castlevania 4, is on this list. Somewhere. I'm not seeing it. Oh no! <laughs> I'm sure it's up there. I'm sure it is, but yeah, why is this on the list? No one likes this game. I don't any of these games before Castlevania 2. <laughs> I mean, I love its soundtrack, but that's all it's got going for it. Holy water everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> I don't believe in you. <laughs> Number 115 is Dragon Warrior. Ah, it's still there. I can't ignore it. I don't even think this should be... Well, not above Dragon Quest IV, at the very least. A slime appeared. This is grinding the video <laughs> game. If you like monotony, here you go. A slime appeared. Uh, why is this above Dragon Quest IV? Historical significance does not mean it's this high. Oh, crap, this isn't even high. We're not even at 100 yet. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to number 114. Dun, Street Fighter 2, the new challengers. I'm going to assume they mean Turbo as well as that. I'm pretty sure they're meaning every Street Fighter 2 at this point. Uh... HD Remix Arcade Turbo Super... If you're going to play Super Street Fighter 2, you get the HD Remix on Xbox Live and PSN. Yes. That's the, that's the version to get. Um, but Championship I'll, I'll edition. Play Alpha. I'll play Alpha, I'll play Street Fighter 3 or 4 before going back to Street Fighter 2. On the Super Nintendo, because, anyway. Yeah, the games are just much better in terms of combat. dun 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 dun, dun. <laughs> Actually, I think... No, no, no. It was Hyper Street Fighter that introduced that Iteration of the Dial's theme. theme. Yeah. What is Hyper Street Fighter? Uh, I think it's just the third version of Street Fighter 2. I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. Why does Capcom need to release so many versions of one game? Because they're Capcom. Mug, money grubbing horse. Yeah, Ted, you're up for number 113 again. Okay, uh, why are all the Dragon Quest games in one spot? Uh, Dragon Quest V, Hand of the Heavenly Bride. Um. I've got mixed feelings on this one because the, the story in this game is very, very great. I really like this game's story, but the game mechanics aren't nearly as good. Well, I wouldn't say that they're terrible. It's just um, basically in this game, you're, you've got your main character, and then for most of the time, you're using monsters that you find in the wild as party members. So it's kind of like Pokemon, but the thing is, is that the monster catching isn't nearly as fun as it is in Pokemon. Because in Pokemon, you, if you find a Rattata, you can just throw a Pokeball, and now you have a Rattata. If you want a slime in Dragon Quest V, you need to find a, you need to run around until you find a slime, and then you fight the slime, and then you have to randomly hope that it decides to join your party. And if it doesn't, you got to run around until you find another one and try again. So it's, it's an item drop. Yeah, it's basically uh, monsters dro- uh, joining your party is an item drop. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But the, all of the good monsters have are like 1 in 64 chance, 1 in 128 chance. So you'll be there for a while. <laughs> Did I get the pink tail as a buddy? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd recommend playing it because it it's still a very good game. 
But I think that four is just a better time overall. I see. Soundtrack's good though. Okay. Number one twelve. Atrian, 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 Atrian Odyssey. Atlas. Yeah, I see the Atlas logo right there. Yeah. So it's no, hard as so it's hard as bald and confusing. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say it's confusing. It's just a gen- from what I hear, it's just a general dungeon crawler. Mm. Etrian Odyssey not only captured the tension and challenge that made old school PC games so compelling, but also cleverly updated for the Nintendo DS with features like touchscreen map making. Three sequels later, its simple formula still satisfies. Meh. It's a dungeon crawler. If you like them, good for you. It's number 111. I'll heat the dog. <laughs> E.G. New. Probably our most controversial Virtual commentary we ever did. <laughs> so this is Yoshi's B. The um, I so that, I mean, no this seems... Ryan's opinion. <laughs> this seems kind of low, doesn't it? Your hate feeds me. <laughs> cool. Ooh, gives me strength. Is it weird that I, rub, I imagine rubbing his nipples when he says that? <laughs> Let the troll flow no, through you. <laughs> Darth Ted and Darth Ryan. Oh, Gives man. you focus. Gives no, you no, you will die. Stop. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, we'll brawl. never we'll never quite out do Ian McDermott, though. A uh, brawl. Hmm. I love, I love Brawl. Yeah, I, I, I like the game just fine. I like Melee better, though. Melee, I think, is better in terms of fighting mechanics, yes. I like... I, 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 that's, that's weird. I like Brawl's... Um, what, wait, hold on. Was the complaint that Brawl was floatier than Melee or not Flo- as floatier? It's, it's floatier than Melee. I Flo- like Brawl's floaty, floatiness a little bit better just because you can move I, around. I feel I like think it slows move... the game down too much, though. I feel like I, I like it a little bit slower because I, I can actually plan what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches don't know about my shuffling. I will say that like tripping is bullshit, but uh, I, I I just I like the better graphics. I like the I like it, it being able to plan what I'm doing, and I love the soundtrack. Soundtrack's just like oh. Oh, oh, oh I think I think Brawl beats Melee in everything except fighting game. mechanics. Yeah. You know, I I love. And, and again, it's not like it's a completely different thing. No, no, no. The, the differences are, are can be rather minute. You know, but yeah. there's, there's something about Melee's speed that I enjoy so much yeah. compared to Brawl. Yeah. Brawl is still a fantastic game. You know, I wasted yeah. hours on Brawl. Me too. <laughs> Don't get yeah. me wrong. I like Brawl just fine, despite what... 50,000 know. matches. Good for you. Now go outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, despite what I sounded like on the commentary, I do really like Brawl. Yeah. Fuck Subspace Emissary, though. Yes, fuck Subspace, Subspace Emissary. Emissary. Subspace Emissary go rot in hell. But Brawl in itself is perfectly fine. It is a great game. Get it. Worst online mode ever, though. Lag. <laughs> Come on, Smash <laughs> Brothers 4. <laughs> Please. Wait, Hold on, there was a rumor about Smash 4 that I'll show you oh, guys. Oh, it's to uh, me. Tell um. Us. After the part, after we're done, after we get to part one hundred or game one hundred, no, tell us. Enough. Tell us now. So anyway, numbers one ten and one oh nine are pretty the much the Oracle same thing. games. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of the Seasons. Seasons is rated higher than Ages, but I, that's mostly arbitrary at this yeah, point. Yeah, I, I think oh, the on, difference between one ten and one nine are more or less the same so place. The Ages and Seasons games were completely different games. Yes. Yes. Okay, but you can link them up together and get the final canon. Fight. Yeah, I know about the link up, but it's just that I wasn't separate sure games. if they were completely separate games. They're separate games, yeah. I always thought it was like Pokemon Red and Blue. No, no, they're they're different. Like in the the they gimmick have different, is, they have different final bosses. They have different dungeons. Their gimmicks are ba- it's just another variation on the light world, dark world. Though it's just time travel for ages and season manipulation for uh, seasons. Uh, I played some of Ages and I dropped it really quickly. It, I found it boring. Did you ever play Link's Awakening? Um, the the Game Boy. Game. No, I haven't played that. Flying well, gonna, gonna... whale. <laughs> Zelda just uh, any form of Zelda just makes it impossible for me to give a shit. I don't know if that's me or what, but yeah. it's you. It's you. <laughs> it, yeah, it's me. <laughs> that's still the most bizarre thing I've seen in a Zelda game: the flying whale. 
And they it's, brought it back for Skyward Sword for some reason. It's a dream world. It's a dream whale. Don't you know? <laughs> well, I have no opinion on it because I I, I, I barely played. I only have um. Which one was the blue one? Ages. Yeah. Ages. Yeah, I have ages, but I, I haven't really played it because uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 108 is out, out of, of this world. world for the Super Nintendo. Never even heard of this. Yeah, me neither. The brainchild of French developer Eric... Chinese. Going Chinese. French, moving on. Out of this world demonstrated early on the power of video games as a storytelling medium. That's so it's a story game. A worthwhile sequel entitled Heart of the Alien came out for the Sega CD in 1994, but Chahi had minimal involvement in its creation. You so, didn't tell us anything so wait, about the it's game. a story-based medium coming from a French guy. Okay, we, we can pass. So, 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 it, so it's artsy-fartsy. <laughs> yeah, so moving on. Uh, number uh, 107 per... Oh, God damn it. Robots! Why? Why? Number 107. It's Professor Layton in the... awful. Professor Layton in the Curious Village. Robots. What's what's wrong with this game besides the ending. obvious ending? Robots. Off, the ending comes out of fucking nowhere and is stupid. <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid ending. Stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid. <laughs> but other than that, um, it's just oh, it's boring. It's uh, first off, the in this kind of game, uh, the puzzles are basically the main meat of the game. But everything linking the puzzles together is shit. The characters you talk to are one note and boring. The, it's almost uh, like robots. <laughs> yeah, the the air, the art I don't find particularly um, engaging. The music is dull as shit. Um, the villain has no motivation at all. He's literally just there to be evil. And as soon as you figure out who he is, he leaves because they didn't want to give him a motivation. <laughs> <laughs> oh you no! Think I'm oh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> puzzle, you you want to know what the thing is, is that the puzzles are trial and uh, here's the thing the puzzles which are the main focus of the game are so fucking trial and error based it, a good puzzle should uh, try to uh, should be beatable uh, on your first try but challenging Professor Layton's puzzles are designed to trick you where you think you think through it and you found the answer through logic but the game it anticipates that and makes it something else so that's bullshit. And, every, and because the game ranks you on uh, on your pu- on your puzzle ability, every time you lose, you lose Thanks points. Coming. And the game gave no, and the game gives you hint coins that you lose after you use them. So the game pretty much encourages save scumming, but there's no soft reset feature. So every time you want to save scum, you have to turn the game off, turn it back on, and go through a fucking recap that's slow as hell. So save scumming takes like thirty seconds each try, and some of the puzzles will take you multiple tries. Ugh. This game just makes me angry, and it's shit. Why is this here? <laughs> Fuck this game. Dun, 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 dun. Why? 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 I am very curious now. I, I want to play this game just for that l- ending alone. I, I, I've seen what, you need to, what you need to do is have that clip ready <laughs> for when you get to the end. Just have Mr. Corn Puff, Cream Puff Man. <laughs> just, it's like you get, to, get, you, get to the, you get to that scene in the game. Click the play button. <laughs> you know what? With all the Nintendo Power issues I've been reading between the years of 2007 and 2000, and, uh, and now I should say, there were pre- pre- Professor Layton uh, advertisements all over the place, and I was wondering what exactly is this. And I hear you have so much resentment towards this game, and I, it, it's a bio fascination, I guess, at this point. Well, it's it's. Uh, I hear that I played the first game. And I really didn't like it. But the thing is, I have friends who adore this game. And then when I heard that Ace Attorney Cross Layton was going to come out, I just said, okay, well, I'll just play this game because I hear it's good and I'm going to want to know the full story for when the game comes out anyway. And I hated it. And people say, okay, yeah, the first one's not that good, but later games uh, get better. I just I just don't want to play more. I, I, I'm... Uh, Robots! I have every Layton game sitting on my desk right here. I got them, so I have a co- complete collection once Ace Attorney vs. Uh, Layton comes out. It's just, I have no motivation to pick up the next one. Ugh. 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 This should not be here. This should not be here. 106, Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim, the soil heated crawl. Earthworm Jim, a super suit did fall. 
Um, I, I haven't beaten Earthworm Jim, the original. Uh, the farthest I got was the uh, aquatic level. That's after what the heck, um, yeah. the hell-based level. Mm-hmm. And after that, I, I usually just stop. I'll send um, you straight to Hiffle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do like it. I, I kind of wish Earthworm Jim, w- in terms of like gun controls, I wish he had unlimited ammo. Yeah. Doesn't um, it have like regenerating ammo? Or something no, I like think that? You run out of it after a while. You get ridiculous amounts of it, but it's still not infinite. Yeah. You know, because you play games like Mega Man or Contra, and you got infinite ammo all the time. Just whether or not you're skilled enough to avoid what was coming at you. Earthworm Gem, on the other hand, if you're not using the gun, you have to rely on your whip attack. And I always find that really unreliable. Mm. But uh, other than that, it, it's it, still it's a fine game. I, 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 I bought the uh, HD port on uh, PSN. So I, I do plan on playing it again. Just not now. All right, so moving on to number 105, Gunstar Superheroes. Gunstar right. Superheroes. Genesis game is better. I'll say that right now. What uh, type of game is this? It's a, it just think Contra, only more... Wow. Just by Sega. Sega. <laughs> it, it's made by Sega. Uh, gra- it's, it's graphically more colorful, I will say that. Uh, great soundtrack. Um, but I, I'm talking about Gunstar Heroes, though, not Superheroes. <laughs> this was for the Game Boy Advance, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was released, but it was released a Game Boy Advance, and, and I played that game. It's okay, you know. It's still it's still a fun title in itself, but I think the original Genesis game is better. You know, I love the whole like when I when I first played, I played the game. Around, I think around ninety five. That's when I first played the game, and I was I was just amazed by how fun it was, and like visually, it was remarkable for me, especially when you're playing. Um, that one stage where you fight it against your brainwashed uh, partner, who has like this mech that has, takes like seven different forms. And, this uh, isn't I, even my final form. <laughs> 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 He's like the size of a building. <laughs> what? <laughs> it, it, something like that. No, no it's something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty hard though. I'll, get, I'll tell you that right now. And the the final boss looks like M Bison. But, uh, <laughs> It, it, it's still it's still a pretty good time to be had. It's actually one of the games we're LPing soon uh, for the channel with Elliot or Matt, whoever wants to join with me. Probably, but, uh, probably Matt because Elliot will die a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I'll die a lot too. It's a pretty hard game, but um, yeah, it's it, it's a fun little romp. You can get it easily nowadays. So, but Gunstar Superhero is the one that's on this list. It's fun too. I think the Genesis game's better though. Yeah, it's number one hundred four. She blasted a master. <laughs> Blaster Master. I remember the first time I ever I saw this I remember this game. The, the, the first time I ever saw this game was the uh, NES poster for it, and it terrified the fuck out of me, because I had no idea what the hell that brown creature was supposed to be. Because it made no fucking sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, other than that, I haven't really played much of this game. Isn't it uh, a Metroidvania? No. To an extent. Um, I, I like how versatile the tank is. Like how it can run up walls and shit like that. Hard as balls. It, it's still a really hard game. <laughs> but yeah, I still don't understand what the deal of that brown monster on the cover is. <laughs> is Maybe that? it's the final boss. I don't know. It could be. You could be right. But what is it? <laughs> so moving on to number 103, Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward. Probably the most recent game on this list because it's for the 3DS and came out this year. Um, okay. this is, if I remember correctly, this is a, a sequel to Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, or 999, as it's more commonly known, which is a game that I own but haven't beaten yet. The Galaxy Express 3.9? What? <laughs> um, basically, from what I can tell, these games are sort of like escape the, uh, uh, escape the room puzzle challenges with a kind of a dark story uh, linking all of the different uh, rooms together. So you want and to play a game? Uh, kind of. Uh, similar to that, yes. Hmm. Uh, I've been meaning to get to this, but I want to finish the first game first, and I haven't done that yet, so... Um, get back to me in six months, and I might have an opinion. <laughs> 102, Pokemon Snap. What, really? What? Huh? Pokemon what? Snap? This high up? What? Really? Huh? What? <laughs> Over Gen 1 and 3? Really? Over any huh? of these games? Pokemon Snap is a fun no, little No, I played Pokemon title. Snap before Gen 4. Or Professor <sighs> Lake. I never, Ted, shut up. I never mentioned... I never <laughs> said... Pokemon Snap, really? Oh, well, no, this is... It shouldn't even be on the list. Uh-huh. <laughs> I played Super Star Wars before this. 
I play any of these games before playing Pokemon Snap, with the exception of maybe Castlevania Two. Castlevania Two. But no, because even Castlevania Two has a bit of a draw. Pokemon Snap, you're just taking pictures. Woo! <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah. So are we going to go to 101 or 100 for the last part? Uh, we'll, we'll go to 100 because we went to 200 last time. Okay. So number so 101. 101 is Professor... <laughs> well, actually, no, this one has not... Well, it shouldn't have anything to do with the robots. This game better not have anything to fucking do with robots. <laughs> so you haven't played it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I hear that this is where the series gets really good, but I, I, I hated the first one. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get this far. <laughs> the unwound future. I'm gonna some has something to do with time travel. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Professor Layton gets a DeLorean. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'll play it eventually, but I'm not looking forward to it. Robots. <laughs> I, I love you, Mr. Cream Puff Man. <laughs> Number one hundred is the is Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong for, for Game, Game Boy. Boy. Game, uh, it's a really good game. Yeah, much better than the uh, NES game. Yeah. Uh, or the like, arcade game? Well, they're yeah, the same game I would thing. say so. Yeah. yeah. One other thing I love about this is just how versatile Mario is. You know, because he pretty much has all of his moves from Mario 64. He in has a, in a way. Jump, he has the backflip jump. He has a he spread has, stand thing. He has a really cool handstand jump. It, it's really funny to me when you can... Because the first four levels in, in this game are the first four levels in the original Donkey Kong game. It's amazing and you can how blow fast by them like... 10 seconds with Mario's acrobatics. Yeah. This also came out the year, same year as Donkey Kong Country, so it's the last time we saw classic Donkey Kong. Uh, yeah. Wait, so is this supposed to be, like, cranky? This is, this is cranky Kong, yeah. It's technically cranky, yeah. Oh, so dealing with a new acrobatic Mario, he just said, fuck it, I'm retiring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that actually makes some sort of sense. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's a great game. There's lots to do. A lot of it's on the Game Boy. It's on the 2DS Virtual Console. Yeah, um, give it a it, shot. It, it, it's my type of thing. Cause I've actually gone and played this repeatedly uh, quite a number of times. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a fun game. We right. need another fucking break. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna take a break right now. So we'll see you guys for the finale in part three. I suck at endings. You guys end it. Um, what? <laughs> 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 I love you, Don Hertzfeld. <laughs> <laughs>